And instead of othering, instead of uh, demonizing, instead of constantly uh, finding ways in which we are different or finding reasons not to like somebody or, or to demonize them, uh, you know, if we could just do this, <laughs> it would sure make uh, a lot of things a lot easier. But yeah. that's, that's, that's obviously not... Um, going to happen <laughs> uh, and, and it's very easy to say that right? welcome back to the state of the arc podcast my name is mike and don't worry Kason is with me for this week's episode i'm recording this right now separately from what we'd already recorded a few days ago um to address something that i think is really really important uh first of all I was, uh, <laughs> I was really happy <laughs> to see how many people reached out last week to tell me to suck their balls. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, or if that just feels totally out of the blue, last week we, had, uh, we were trying to do a bit of an experiment where we asked people to leave a comment and like uh, specifically to see if there was a problem with the drop-off for this podcast series we're doing on Nier Automata in viewership, and whether that was related to engagement from the audience or whether that was something we needed to fix on our side. And um, the result of that, for those who are interested in knowing, uh, we, we got tons of engagement. I mean, just out of the roof engagement in terms of comments and likes. But um, the, the numbers did not, as, as far as viewership, did not really like change much. So that's not the problem. That's really, really good for me to know because that means there is something I can do on my end. So uh, without having to ask people to like and subscribe, which I hate doing. So that's awesome. So thank you for doing that. We really appreciate you. And there was just uh, so many amazing comments and, and people reaching out and sharing how much they appreciate what we do and that they look forward to what we do every week. And it was a really humbling thing to read those comments. It was amazing. So thank you for doing that. I think what we need to do is just update our formats for our thumbnails and our the titles of our videos, and that will go a long way toward helping with this. Um, but there are some other things we can do as well, and we're talking about that behind the scenes. Nothing currently that we need to you know, update you guys on, but we will in, in the future. So that being said, there were a couple of comments that were left that uh, I felt like I need I needed to address, but not like specifically. It's not the comment specifically. I feel like that needs to be addressed as much as a, more of a, a larger sentiment that has been weighing heavily on me and on my mind for many, many years and has sort of come to a head in such a way that I feel almost a responsibility to speak about this. It is something that is very very, very important to me. So, um, there was one part of this where people were uh, sharing some disappointment or were even upset at some of the things that were said about To Be and the female characters in the game and how well or not they were represented as characters rather than as objects uh, for the male gaze and that sort of thing. This was all on the back of a comment we had received for last week's video, which we were trying to address, saying they were disappointed. We hadn't talked about that very much yet. So I'm gonna get more into that in a minute, but that was one part of it. Uh, the other part of it was regarding whether or not the format here on the podcast is, how do I put this? I, I, think, I think the way that it was put, and I apologize if I sort of butcher the, the summary of, of this point, or if I misrepresent it. But the idea that uh, we don't get into the meat enough on this podcast, that there's too much sort of milk drinking, so to speak, between Kason and myself in terms of the depth of the discussions, because there is some sort of insistence on walking the middle of the road and not really representing um, more controversial sort of takes on some of these concepts and topics that we hit on regarding philosophy and uh, religion and politics and whatnot. 
and that the content is boring for that reason. And, um, and in the attempt to sort of like walk the middle of the road and not pick sides that we have, uh, somehow watered down the potential that our discussions can have. So those are kind of the, the two things that I, I really want to uh, address on like on a more general scale, but not like directly necessarily. Um, so here's the thing. I actually think this game is, is perfect for this topic of conversation. You know, it's one in which the central message, the core theme is all about identifying how the the systems and the ideologies that we follow are all engineered to have us seeing those outside of those tribes as our enemies and how arbitrary that really is and this is exactly what has been bothering me about our public discourse for many, many years. It, it, our, our public discourse, the way that we talk to each other about politics, the way we talk to each other about religion and things like this, it, it absolutely sickens me to see the state that it is in. So when we're making commentary about near automata and we have somebody in the comments saying something like, I wish that the two of you would go further in terms of representing both sides of this debate or argument. To me, that really strikes home at what is wrong about the way we talk about these things. As if you cannot get to the meat of this conversation without representing these two opposing sides and debating it. I know that this debate format is really, really popular right now, both on TV in, you know, like the, the sort of mass media and then on YouTube as well. It's, it's like people crave to see two people debating and arguing on opposite sides of a subject. And I think that that plays into the, our tribalistic nature. I think this is something that is, is really was an evolutionary strategy and something that at one time was a requirement for survival. You had to go pick the strongest tribe and fight for that tribe and your tribe winning was a matter of survival. That is not so much the case when we're talking about whether Michael Jordan or LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time, right? Or whether uh, PlayStation or Xbox has the better library of games this generation. These things are silly. In turn, but but people fight for them with the fervor that would suggest that this is vitally important to them to win, to have their side win. And this has led to a lot of our entertainment being, you know, put under that format, under the format of two opposing sides locked in combat or debate or arguing. And I, I reject that premise wholesale as being where you find the meat in discussions of the kind that we're having. Not only that it's not where the meat is found, but that it is poisonous to our public discourse. It has made it to where we have no idea on a larger scale as a society how to talk to each other. And as I read some of these messages last week, I, I was kind of overwhelmed. I had like a real sense of disappointment in myself that for some of our viewers, 
we seem to have not been able to instill any level of confidence that when we offer an opinion on something, that if we're wrong about that, even if we're very wrong about that, that we won't, in the very next episode, address that if a, a counterpoint comes up with things that we had not considered in that conversation, that we're not open enough to be able to do that. Now, I don't necessarily blame anybody for that. We've had some people saying, you know, this is the last time I'm watching this podcast because of things like this, instead of approaching us and saying, hey, I think you're wrong about this. And here's reason one, two, three, and four, why? Because the assumption is these people are left-leaning politically, which is wrong, by the way. And that's really the core of what I want to speak about and how it ties in ties into the, the, the theme of the game here. Because this one commenter said, your opinions align with the people in this political sphere, or you're at least leaning that direction. And therefore, um, this is more or less what people on a wider scale accept and and so this is boring content and I don't want to engage with it anymore whether or not you want to engage with it anymore is not the purpose of me addressing this uh, if you don't want to watch it anymore it's fine it doesn't bother me either way what bothers me about this comment is that the assumption that was made because of what was said on the podcast is completely wrong Kaysen is right leaning and he has been concerned. This is something I addressed with him when we talked last time. He's been concerned about um, what he says on the podcast because I want to sell a book someday. And he's like, if you, uh, you know, kind of a guilt by association thing. If people find out you associated with me and I said something like this, um, you know, that might hurt you in the future. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care about that because that entire concept the, the entire fact that people would have to fear that at all is ridiculous. Especially in the case of Kaysen, who I know very well, and who is very, very open to hearing counterpoints and adjusting his views. As for me, it, it's basically like my mantra, like my compass in life, to not belong to any ideology. I, I go out of my way to not belong to a in-group because of how important this, this concept is to me that I'm talking about. I want to take topics one by one, separate from each other. I don't want any ideology to guide what I decide or what I think about anything. I'm going to take them one by one and decide what is right or wrong about that thing and remain open to counterpoints because, of course, I, I'm not going to have all the information that I need to <laughs> make a, an informed opinion about something. So, no, I'm not left-leaning. I'm not right-leaning. I'm not on that spectrum. I refuse to be placed on it because I, I, I wholesale reject that people should use an ideology to decide what they believe about things. So the fact that somebody made that comment and said that you guys are left leaning and this and this, it, it's wrong. It's just wrong. It's not correct. And you would know that if you would reach out and ask for clarification or say, hey guys, you, you said this, this, and this. I wondered if you considered these counterpoints. What do you think about that? And started a dialogue. Not a debate, not an argument, a dialogue. That is what I wanted this podcast to be from the start. 
which is why I tried to set it up in a sort of a book club format. I don't want to have debates. I don't want to have arguments because that feeds into something that I think is absolutely toxic and poisonous to our public discourse. And that has never <laughs> been a good model for convincing people about what is right or not. And there is no way I am going to feed into that on this podcast. So if that's what you're looking for, I understand. You're not going to get it here. But to me, it's really important that when we're wrong about something, that I tell you that you can have confidence in us, that if you reach out and you, and you lay down why you think we're wrong about something, that we will not only read that, but we will, with total good faith, consider everything that you're saying. With that in mind, we have done that regarding the points that were made about 2B and A2 and the female characters in the game. And there was something that we were missing. There was some context there that we were missing because it comes at the end of the game. And it was, a, it was something that I had forgotten about. I hadn't played this game in six years and I'd only played it once before. So that's something that, you know, I, I would love to discuss and, and sort of like, uh, you know, correct on the podcast. So you can always feel free to do that. You don't have to feel like, oh, these guys lean one way or the other politically or they have, they're in this camp, you know, other us in this way. You're outside of my tribe. So no point in talking to you. I'm just going to leave. This is not the place where that is necessary. I, I, I hope that we can instill that better moving forward. Because I have never in my life been concerned about who is right about anything. The who does not matter. It is the what. So that's, that's more or less what I wanted to say. Um, I wanted to put that at the very beginning because this is something that is, like I said, hugely, hugely important to me. And I wanted to make sure that we address that right away. Um, so that in the future, if we say something that you just feel it, it, it triggers you in some way, right? <laughs> um, for my own sake, not even for yours, for my sake, as a person who really wants to grow, I, I invite you to offer your perspective on it rather than just get mad and, and you know, walk away. Because this podcast is not really even meant for me to sit here and, uh, you know, study and, and teach the audience. It, it, it's a, a two-way thing. It was set up to be a dialogue from the beginning. I have learned so much from our commenters. It, it's, it blows my mind all the time how, how much I've learned from our viewers. And that's why I love doing this podcast. I love hearing from people and I love hearing uh, all, uh, perspectives that challenge mine. So I'm totally open to, to listen to that, uh, always. So that being said, uh, let's, let's cut over now to uh, what Kaysen and I re recorded last week. I wrote down as my first note here, heading into the Forest Kingdom, there's now a, a strange structure. Oh, I guess, no, no, no. Oh, is this we the tower? We left off with this the, tower the tower first. I, that was because... actually at the end of my last week's note. So let me start oh, there. Okay, cool. I have because... a couple notes before we... Get okay, going. Go but we're it. basically starting with 9S's run now. Yeah, we're, we're starting with 9S now. Yeah. That's where we're at. So, In the first off, I want to posit the possibility. I didn't think about this until I always find these things as I'm editing the podcast later. Um, it's possible that 9S discovering the truth was the virus. What do you mean? Okay. <clears throat> the truth is the virus, right? Okay. Oh, so oh I see. What you're like on a more. Uh, yeah, metaphysical kind of, yeah. Philosoph philosophical yes. level, okay. <laughs> I feel like maybe what Yoko Taro is saying <clears throat> is that the closer 9S got to the truth, the closer he got to unleashing this virus. Now, here's the thing. The truth can be like a virus. Mm -hmm. It can destroy institutions. Once the truth gets out, all of a sudden an institution will crumble. Yeah. You know, like once, um, uh, once a, a, a book is written, 
that exposes something happening, boom, the whole thing breaks, right? right. So <clears throat> truth is a virus. And let's say somebody knows something secret about the king, and then they start to whisper it. It starts to spread like a, a virus. Um, this was uh, King Midas when he had golden... Well, no, no, before the golden touch, when he had donkey's ears, right? So he had these donkey ears, but he didn't want anyone to know. Uh, but his barber one day was cutting his hair and saw the donkey's ears. And so he buried the secret in the sand um, near a river. Uh, but then the weeds grew over the river and began to whisper. And before you know it, the truth spread like a virus basically yes. and it completely anyways it caused him all sorts of grief i'm just saying 9s once he discovers the truth it's like oh my gosh there's this virus that's rampant and it's spreading and we've got to we've got to clamp down on it and restart the whole thing and that is what happens when the truth of a corrupt institution gets exposed i like that reading right i, I think, think that's right think there's a connection there yeah. I, I i thought of that as i was editing also a2 i didn't um and this leads into what we're talking about here a2 cut her hair. Yes. I didn't realize that that's what had happened. Yes. It's kind of hard to see that in the shot because it it's is. like her feet. Yeah. It's not, and then she, you just see the hair you fall. You see the hair kind of falling. But you, yeah. before that, you saw the blade <clears throat> approaching yes, her hair. Yes, kind of going up. I just didn't know exactly what was going <clears throat> on there. Um, so, interesting. She begins to look more like Tubi yes. when she does that. Two reasons for this. One, I guess the in lore reason, for whatever reason, is she's trying to cut any infection getting into her. That's like the lore reason. Uh, She's cutting her hair so that the inf- she doesn't get infected. But the actual reason well, why they did to this hair. is because they wanted to be able to show footage from this part of the game in the marketing and uh, not have people assume that there's a new character. That there's a new character, just uh, that it's to be after being that's battle. That's the real hardened. reason? That's the real reason. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Because she looks like <laughs> to be. And so they didn't want, you know, they didn't want to give away this, it's like, oh, that, she's a dirty version of 2B. 2B got yeah, dirty and took off right. her blindfold. That was the real reason right. that they oh, wanted to crazy. make that change. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. I did not know that. That's very cool. Yeah. I was thinking, because there is symbolism, <clears throat> I think specifically in a place like Japan, when you go through a big life change, you get a haircut. You cut your hair. Final Fantasy IX. Oh, yeah, that's Garnett. right. Garnett that's right. does this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to cover that game. Oh, that's going to sure. be rich. Yeah. That's going to be fun if yeah. people ever freaking <clears throat> vote for it. Um but when you go when you go through a breakup or when you have a different life change, uh, when you move to a new town, um, one of the things that's common in, in the culture is you then cut your hair, right? And I feel like A2, A2 at this moment, there's some weird transfer of 2B's memories into her. Yeah. Somehow it happens. I've heard some theories. It could be the sword. It could be all sorts of things. Um, but she kind of changes as a person from this point on. And then so she cuts her hair. Anyways, hearing you tell me the real reason makes me uh, <laughs> disappointed. Well, I, again, I, just I, so I, everyone I else knows, it, it's it's all <laughs> all of it's correct. It's just that yeah, yeah. They, it was also convenient that they there could then go. show more footage. And that makes me not feel have better. to worry about plot the twists being spoiled or whatever. Okay, all right. So nine S is awake. That's where I'm at. Right. So, um, what is he? I wrote down here. Now we move on to 9S. Yep. He's woken up by Devila and Popla. That's right, Devila and Popla. And they're the only ones who can repair androids without the bunker. Yes. They're the only ones. Yes. So he has to go to them for maintenance from this point onward. Yep. Uh, so I, I took down some dialogue. There, there used to be a lot of uh, our models around. Yes. Devil and Popola models around. Yes. Uh, apparently, we were put in place to oversee some kind of large-scale system that was in place. Mm-hmm. She's referring to... The first game. Yes. Um, and there's actually quite a bit that is revealed yeah, in this game. Yeah, we get a whole memory. Yeah. Yeah, that I didn't remember. And, and I was surprised. I'm going to talk about it when we get to it, but yeah. I was kind of surprised at how yeah, much they went into. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So there's a lot of things we're safe to say about Devil and Popola because it's in apparently, this game. <laughs> apparently. Apparently. Uh, but uh, anyway. Very so uh, apparently, what does that mean? It means we don't know. <laughs> All the <laughs> records from that era have been deleted. That's our right. model kind of went nuts at some point in the past. It ended badly. Most of our kind were disposed of after that, but mm. we were spared. They used us as a sort of control group in order to ensure such a thing couldn't happen again. I'd like to think that we're atoning in some way for our past sins. Yeah, so, and as, as we learn later, their life has been very difficult. Oh, it's awful. Ever since this. Yeah. And so the only, what it, it seems like in an existential way, um, they, the only way that they can continue is if they think that they're atoning for their sins. Right. So they've, uh, they've ascribed a meaning to all their suffering, and that's what's um, keeping them going. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I wrote that when 9S leaves the camp, he sees this enormous tower structure. Yeah, um, it's above crazy. the area where the aliens yes, had right. been hiding underneath. Um, he says, what is that? Uh, pod 153 says an enormous facility that yep. appeared from an area beneath the ground It would appear to be machine related in origin <laughs> further details are obvious, obviously obviously <laughs> yeah. uh, The pods make very obvious <laughs> yes, observations really, from time to time which uh, a2 yeah. loves to call out but so there's a big tower Yeah, it's got a know. human voice mm. that like me gives announcements. Yeah, and it's, stuff. it's crazy it's part of the game's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but I do want to talk about the similarities to a plant that this structure mm. has, right? So it basically comes up out of the ground like a plant. Yes. And um, that's interesting given that the aliens were kind of plant-like, right? So this is almost like a like the blooming or the sprouting of a plant from underground. Um, and it's speaking to us in an English voice that is not like the robots, how it took the robots a long time to slowly learn how to talk. This tower shows up and it's just like, First off, it's like joking and telling puns and all yeah. this weird stuff. Right. But also, it just sounds perfectly like a human voice. Yeah. So, there's something weird going on here. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it's kind of unsettling. It is. Like the levity with which this voice yeah. talks. It's just it's like, like a carnival. Disconcerting. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, once again, 9S says there's no purpose to anything they do. Yeah. He's, he's going backwards now. Yes. He's reverting back to the right. black and white viewpoint that he, that he used to have. Right. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> 9S no longer cares about chain of command, I wrote. He's yep. going to wipe out the machines and kill A2. Yep. So, I think the pot had suggested, you know, you need to go back to someone at the camp uh, about this and, and sort of figure out chain of command for what to do. He's like, I don't oh, care about that right, anymore. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's irrelevant now. Yep. So he's fully bent on his, uh, revenge here. Um, so I headed to the forest kingdom first. I think that's where the first, well, oh, I, I guess I should explain. There's three keys that need to be, um, acquired yes. in order to open the the, the way to get into this And tower. the names of the entrances, the names of the places when you acquire the keys, or what the keys go to, I suppose, yeah. are really interesting. Yeah, they have different names. There's like the meat box. Yep. The the breath box, I think. The soul. The, the soul, soul box, box. The meat box. And the, what was that third one? Oh, I just had it. It's, oh, we'll get to it. I can't remember. God box. The God box. The That's God it. box. That's it. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. Um, yeah, so, and, and it's all written in angelic script, so. Yeah, that's right. That's something we'll get to as well, but. I Which went is to the a forest. real script, by the way. Yeah, I went to the Forest Kingdom first. I don't know if there's an order specifically you're supposed to do this, but mm -hmm. um, you have to go to different areas, get the keys, bring them back to unlock the tower to get inside. Um, so there's this kind of strange structure that appears in the Forest uh, Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's emitting... Uh, Steam they they talk about yeah. how there's like steam emitting from it for some reason uh, As you get closer it sort of shifts into this defense mode um, oh. And and I wrote yeah, meat box is written in angelic script meat box, yeah. um, We hadn't really touched on the angelic script since the early episodes where we were just saying all the bosses names were written that way and then they were translated in English. We didn't really touch on it, yeah. Did you have any insight on no, why that No, the angelic script, it's old, it's like 500 years old when it was um, first created, I think. Yeah. Um, it's uh, an esoteric kind of thing that a group of people put together a long time ago. I don't know exactly why it was used. I do have, so I came across something today mm. as as I often do, I was reading the second book of Enoch <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to talk about it later, but I have some ideas about, um, possibly the whole series and why it's called near in the first place. Oh, okay. Um, and it comes from Slavonic, the Slavonic book of Enoch. Um, I'm going to talk about it later though. So okay. that's just a little bit of a tease, but there's okay. some important stuff there. Um, other than that, I can't say other than that it's, it's a, it's a high script that seems to be trying to be something that it's not. Got it. Okay, so some dialogue I took down here. Is this entire building made of machines, even on the inside? That's creepy. Yeah. And Pot says, analysis, many useless parts unrelated to machine life forms, function, uh, functionality are detected. There's no meaning to anything they do, he says again. Yeah, right. that's right. That one, yeah. And uh, I wrote down some dialogue from some of the machines. So much pain, 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 pain. I want to die. Machines can't feel pain is his response to that. Um. Shut up, shut up, shut up. He's like losing it. Just stop right. talking. They're saying things like, help me, help me, help me. 
Um, there's like a light. There's like a ball of light that's saying yes. that. That says it's it's like inside of this like um it's like a the, power it's structure. The core yeah, the core at the top. But it's talking to us, and it's yeah. just like a little ball of light. It's it's the weirdest thing. But nine yeah. S doesn't really care much. So yes. he kills it. <laughs> yeah, and he kill it. Nine S fire. So I don't know. If I'm just mistaken, and it sounded like Tubi's voice to me, no, but it I wasn't think it Tubi's was, voice. I think it was meant to be. Okay. Sound like Tubi's voice. If that's the case, then my assumption is that the machines are trying to either use Tubi's voice to t- appeal to him to get him to stop or make him hesitate. That's what I thought. Or he's hearing that himself. Mm. He's a part of the machine network. That could. And be Tubi's it. kind of whole wish that she sort of passed on to A2 was to make sure that mm-hmm. 9S stays a good person. This is what she says to right. him at the very end, right before they fight. Yeah. So I couldn't quite make out who's speaking or mm-hmm. if it really is Tubi's voice that I heard, but it sounded like Tubi's voice to me. Huh. And so uh, my brain is just like trying to like figure out like wh- wh- what, who, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> who said well, that? Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't have any insight for that. Uh, so anyway, just something I, 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 it'd be interesting to see what people's opinions are in the, in the yeah. comments and clarifying on that. Uh, Ritaru I, is saying it's a little unclear to me what's going on with the resource. Cl- oh, okay. This is a different, a different thing. Never mind. Kay. What are you going to say? Um, I had a, an insight w- with A2 earlier as well. So remember we talked about in the last episode how there's like a ball of pixels that's like black voxels, yes. I guess. And she ends up like slicing it and then Tubi appears behind her. Um, I took that a slightly different way after editing the podcast. Mm. And I think that it's, um, I think that is A2 killing her own childhood. Oh. Like that's the child version of her and she's ending it. Yeah. That that's the way I after looking at it again a little bit more critically, um, I feel like that's what's happening in that section, right? And Got then Two B shows up, right? Yeah, right. And yo, you're not supposed to be there. But A two was kind of dealing with her own problems um, at the beginning. And the C run is called Childhood's End. Childhood's um, End. Yep. I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that once we get to the ending. Yes. I suppose, and what exactly that means. Okay. Um. But all right. Okay. So then, Nine S of course talks about how he wants to kill every last machine. Um, yep. but the machine in the end, the machine wants us to kill it. Did yeah, you, you kill took me, that note? kill me, yes. kill me, yeah. coward. That was it. And then nine S nine S clenches his fist and kills it. And this is um, where the pods start talking, and they're like, "Hey, nine S and A two are kind of losing it." Yes, specifically nine well, S. Yeah, let's keep them away from each other. Yeah, I, I, I guess not A two. It's specifically nine S. Like, I keep them separated. Love the dialogue between pod 153 and pod 042. Yeah, the way it evolves. This whole C yeah, route. I, think I so. love it. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's so it's, fun. It's so witty and charming yeah. and funny in the face of some of the darkest material in the yeah, game yeah, yeah, thematically. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it was actually super inspiring and I felt really brilliant uh, because it, when you're writing stuff content of of this type Mm -hmm. i think it can be very easy to sort of get swept up in it and and just take it more and more and more seriously all the time and just go further with it and just like really but like man those moments where they talk to each other just they're short but they really lift that and give you some relief for a second uh without compromising the tone Without no, making it so, silly, yeah. yes, without yeah, making yeah. it uh, into a joke, without right. not respecting its own sort of thematic uh, yeah. momentum. Um, <laughs> brilliant the way that they use these two characters, and I love their yeah. conversations back and forth. I, I love, too, that it spans different um, ways, different mediums, I guess. Like, sometimes it's just the text. You're reading their conversation back and forth, and then sometimes you get to see them yeah. interacting as though they're speaking to each other. Right. Um, and it can, I think there's three different ways that you can see it, but yeah, yeah it's wonderful. I love it. So, analysis. Unit 9S has destroyed the core of a resource recovery unit. He has obtained an authorization key in the process. Yep. But I'm concerned about his worsening psychological state. <laughs> Care should be taken to prevent Unit 9S from coming in contact with Unit A2. That's right. Affirmative. Affirmative. Likewise, this pod will take care to see that Unit A2 avoids contact with 9S. See, they're scheming <laughs> behind their backs. It's just yes. so funny. Well, because that's their job. Ultimately, yes. what we find out in this is yeah. they're, they're meant to, in this cycle 
of death and rebirth yeah. and this war that's been restarted over and over again. Their job is to delete the last of the data from the yeah, Yorha androids right. and reboot it and restart yes, over again. That's, that's the right. pod's job. Yeah, yeah. Right? And this particular cycle happens to be the one where they found their will or their yeah. own consciousness and decided, no, I don't think I'm going to do that this time. Right. <laughs> I don't feel right about that. I have yeah. feelings of attachment to these Yorha uh, units mm. and I want to retain their memories instead. That's the E ending, right? So we're going to get into that. Right. But this is the beginnings of that. It's it, yeah. it sort of slowly the pod's attitude about what their job even is, is starting to change. Yep. And you can extrapolate from this that this cycle has been going on because they finally do give a date, like a real date at the end of this. I don't think they had done any dating except for saying that the war between the humans and the aliens and that started in like 5,000 something yeah. uh, AD. It was 11945, I think. Yeah, right? is the year yeah. that in which they're in now. Now, I've heard, now we haven't brought this up yet, but I, I have heard, uh, not least because I do read the comments, um, that these numbers are directly in association with World War II. Yes. And I, I haven't figured out exactly how everything fits together. It's probably something we can talk about next time. Yeah, yeah. but 11,945 was meant to look like 1945. Yes. And... Um, what that means for somebody from Japan specifically. Yes. Um, especially in terms of Japan having to kind of reverse what they've been doing for the last hundred years and kind of, or thousand years, and uh, start on a new trajectory without any of their previous baggage, right? Mm. Like the emperor renounced their religion and like all this stuff. Everything completely, like they, they had to kind of forge their own new way in right. the world, right? right? And that's 1945 Japan. Right. Um, so... You know, they kind of lost all their meaning and yeah. had to kind of create a new meaning for it. Right. Anyways, I think that's very um, important to Yoko Taro. Yeah, for sure. All the other dates, that's what I'm a little confused about. Yeah, but um, in any case, it's been at least 5,000 or 6,000 years of yeah. this fighting between the machines yeah. and the androids. And they've it's it's been started over yep. many, many times in that process. And so the pod's job is to when the 9S eventually figures out the truth and they have to sort of reboot the whole yeah, system again, yeah. which is all part of the religion of Yorha, is to give androids a purpose by giving them a god to fight for. But right, that right, god right. has been dead the whole time. Right, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it goes back to the whole monologue at the very beginning from 2B. Yes. If I could find or discover the god who put us in the situation, kill him, you, know, yeah. you know, like uh, if we'll ever get the chance to kill him, right. you know, God's been dead for a long time. And you know, what's crazy with the existentialist attitude of something like a godless universe and an individual in there. Um, if you're looking for, if you're trying to kill God when the God doesn't exist um, in an existentialist state, you then have to look to yourself. Yes. The idea is that, You've got to turn that, you've got right. to turn your sights on yourself, right? You find the meaning in the struggle. Y yes. yes. Or, you know, anyways. Or not, and be <laughs> miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but um, the idea of killing God in an existentialist universe is that you're God. Yeah. And if you're you're to blame for your own situation or yes. whatever it is, right. like you can at any point break out of this. If, if, you know, if you're not able to do that, then, well. Right. So, Okay. But anyways, I, I love these conversations they have between us. So they're trying to avoid them running into each other. Um, so you go to the flooded city next. This is the one that has soul box written on it. That's right, yeah. Um, as he navigates the structure, he's learning about the tower facility. So he's, yes, hacking, into certain, um, he's hacking into different terminals, and he's yeah. getting a lot of data that was top secret data from That's the bunker right. or from the human server. And some of it's not useful, but some yeah. of it is... Uh, yeah, some Very of it is is like, oh my gosh, this is total like uh, table flipping information for an yeah. android to learn, right? So um, he learns that the tower structure itself is some kind of cannon aimed at the server aimed on the at moon. The moon, yeah. And uh, so what I wrote down for this is tower system online. Uh, the tower facility possesses the, and computerizes or processes and computerizes resources sent by resource recovery units for use in its launch device made up of 256 strata, a bunch of other techno babble stuff here, a uh, turbidity of less than 2,300. I don't know what they're Sweet. measuring, 2,300 <laughs> somethings. Somethings per second. <laughs> yeah. there, there's no measurement for what that's supposed to be. Details regarding uh, routes required for the digestion of androids 
are recorded separately. The digestion, digestion of androids. Of androids. Yeah. So this seems to me like a recycling process. Yes. Dead androids are brought to a place. They are then harvested for their resources, and then either new androids or robots are then, machines, I mean, machines, are yeah. then uh, spit out the other end. Right. Uh, the next one was the really in, uh, interesting one, though. Um, so I, I, uh, I guess I took down that he had said something like, oh, so this is some kind of uh, canon to the server and, and pod 153, insufficient data, cannot confirm or deny. Okay. But this, this would be at least the, the first point in the game in which I would assume this is a direct lie. That the pod, the is pod actually knows and it's just not saying, hmm. which I didn't uh, before consider that they hmm. had the capability of doing such a thing, but I think they can. They're now the, and growing. this next one is the big one. Top secret. Yeah, the following document true. details the final stages of Project Yorha. Note that this document has been marked with level SS confidentiality and should not be disclosed to any Yorha personnel, including the bunker commander. Each Yorha unit is equipped with a black box, an item created by reusing the core of a machine life form. As such, it could be said that the consciousnesses of Yorha units and machine life forms share the same structure. Mm -hmm. Said black boxes were installed after determining that it would be inhumane to install standard AI in androids that are ultimately designed for disposal. That was huge. Ooh. That was huge. I, I particularly love the choice here to make the machine cores and the android cores one the and same. the same thing that are just recycled. Love that. <clears throat> that was really cool. As a, as a meta commentary yeah, on the yeah. whole thing we've been building up to with yep. the uh, Coca-Cola commercial yes, and the yeah. touching hands between the people of India and Pakistan, yeah. you, you're made of, your, your souls are the same. Right. You're not enemies the way you think you are we're right. all you're all made up of the same stuff loved it that's very loved powerful it. there's something extremely dark within all of this though yeah which is that the androids so the androids possess some uh, something of an ai on their own right uh -huh. i don't know where that ai is or what's running it um i'm assuming we've seen the extent of what the androids are or what they have yeah maybe devil and popla have the ai um but specifically, the Yorha units were designed... Okay, this is so dark. I, I've got to organize my thoughts for a bit. So the um, androids decided, hey, we're going to make these Yorha people, and they're going to go attack the machines. But we're not inhumane or anything, so we're going to make these androids have the soul of a machine, which we hate. Yes. And that way, when we send them off to die, it's just the machine that's dying, and that's okay, mm -hmm. right? If you take that all the way, they're like, we wouldn't use our own AI. Oh, that would be heartless. Yes. No, can you imagine installing our AI? That I would know. They would feel, they would hurt. But what if we take one of their AIs yeah. and then just raise them up as an android and tell them that they're on our side, but really they're machines. Right. And then we send them out. That, that was, and then when they die, yeah. it's just a machine dying. It's no big deal. Yeah. Isn't that like, yeah. I don't know. That the, line. Your house messed up. The said black boxes were installed after determining that it would be inhumane, inhumane. to install standard AI <laughs> in androids, in androids yes. that are ultimately destined for a disposal. See, <coughs> but this, this circumvents the concept of AI in the first place. The idea of artificial generalized general intelligence, which it's debatable whether that can be fully conscious or not, but like... AI is AI. Like the discussion we're having right now, do you care if it's like a machine what, AI? Chat GPT AI versus <laughs> like what's Bing's weird thing or whatever? An aliens Google's version doing? of that? Yeah, the aliens version of AI, which yeah. presumably still um, has the same or similar probability of having a first person like consciousness associated with it, mm. right? Is it less inhumane because the aliens made like a same thing? It's AI. It's the same thing. It does the That's, same thing. That is the othering of aliens. It's just they made it, not you. It's the humans othering yeah. aliens. That's so. Their AI is up. lesser or not as in right. conscious or not as. Uh, uh, it is. It is morally. It's okay. Okay, yeah. to let the aliens, the others, Their, AI. Yeah be recycled in this way and and be stuck in this wheel of samsara uh <laughs> yes. digital yes. version of that's that that's exactly what this right? is by the way yeah um rather than our own that we created 
it's just another form of otherness. And it's able. almost just semantics at this point, yeah. whether it's ro- machine core versus, um, what do they say? Standard AI. Yeah. Like you're just splitting hairs, but it's like, but you can pellet this one and you can't pellet the other one. Right. And there's a lot of ethical uh, conundrums that we, you present to humans and people don't really know what to do with them. Like what would you, you know, kill a person to save a person? Well, would you kill a person to save two people or would you kill two people to save one person? Or yeah. uh, the way people answer it, a lot of times it's not about the math. It doesn't matter how many people get saved. You're not getting me to kill a person, right? right. There's like a separate argument about it. Um, and it seems like, cause if you just do it mathematically, oh yeah, you can kill one and save two. You should totally kill the one. Right. That's how a robot or a math. Right you know, mathematically that just makes sense to do it. Um, but, um, Oh shoot. I was going somewhere with that. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Um, in regards to oh, yeah, what? the AI of robots or aliens versus Yes, it humans. was. Um, so the ethical, so the way that humans think is, oh, me doing a thing is what's unethical. The number of people who die as a consequence is not part of the ethics mm, of a human. The, the ethics of a human deals with your actions, what yeah. you do. Right. And if you cause somebody to die, that's worse than if you did nothing and five people died, but right. you could have stopped it, but you didn't yeah. kill them, the so that's okay. The problem yeah. situation, yeah. So, um, I think that's what's happening here. It's like, hey, here's our AI and here's the other AI. And if you do it mathematically, because I'm trying to analyze it mathematically, it's like, no, they're they're the same. They yes, are the same. Right. And at their core, that's what this that's what Yoko Taro is trying to say. Yes. They are the same. Oh, I see what you mean. But to the AI or to the machines, they will see it uh, in a different way. They'll yes. say, oh, but it all depends on who's the one doing it. And so they have like almost a way of justifying, yes. you know, ethically the way that they're treated. I didn't groups. create this AI. So yeah. if I were to cruelly yeah, make my own AI that I created by my own hand suffer. That seems that worse wrong. than taking yes. someone else's AI that I didn't cause to come into existence and doing yes. it to them. Yes. It's a yeah. way of wiping your hands of the whole situation. Yep. And being it's like, not a very good way, so be but it. it's it a no. way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way. And humans are, or androids, humans, whatever, are, they are good at finding a way. Yes. It has we, we almost it have to be. do it in order to exist. Sure. Like, um, what is it? I don't have my phone on me, but I'm pretty sure it was made by um, people who are not well paid in a country that starts with a C in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't help. I, I have to pretend that that's not the case. Yeah. When I use certain electronics. I have yeah. to pretend that this was not made in Fox from a Foxconn lab in China. I have to pretend that the workers at Foxconn aren't 12 and sleep at the factory. You know, I have to like pretend that that's not the case in order for me or to just use this product. It's not immoral for you because you didn't put them. I'm in not the, the one that put them there. Yeah, yeah. Even if you think you aren't justifying things, um, we all do it. Yeah. And it's, it's so hard to be conscious of that and to live conscious of it. Yes. Right. Like the, you know, a lot of the shoes that you will buy were made by child slave labor in sometimes North Korea, North Korea yeah. will sell stuff to China and then China will then sell it to us with a made in China on it. it wasn't made in China yeah. or sometimes it's made, you know, over, um, in the Xinjiang region of Western China. Right. And then yeah. it's like, these people are not well paid. Yeah. These people are often not paid at all. This is, you don't die and you work in this factory. Um, and often these people are quite underage. Um, but this is the, this is the conundrum that we all have to face. And at some point you do kind of have to wash your hands of it and step back because this is a situation you have no control over. Yeah. Um, I deal with this often. I don't often think about where this, how, and where this thing came from. Um, but we do the same thing. Yeah. We still do it. And, uh, it would be nice if we didn't have to, I guess. Yeah. This is all part of the equation of meaning in this existence we live in and, and what trying to figure it all out. But I love, I love how Yoko Taro makes me think about this stuff. Yes. He forces me to think about how I am unethically betraying my own principles in an othering way to where I say, well, I didn't do it. It's fine. We yeah. all do it. And Yoko Taro is like holding a mirror. And, and that is the whole sort of philosophy <sighs> of Samsara is yeah. you, you continually go in the cycle until yep. you find where that meaning is and then you yeah. can ascend. And then you can it. escape. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what these androids and machines are struggling with is to find yeah. where that meaning is at and escape. It takes 5,000 years. <laughs> but eventually, <laughs> eventually, they're able the to stop it. The pods get consciousness and yeah. hopefully who, break who the would cycle, have thought that knows? it was the pods it was all up to them <clears throat> they I had they were the never ones. would have guessed that yeah exactly 
Okay, um, so that was crazy. Uh, so, and so oh, this man. blows 9S away. The Yorha black box circuitry, it's made from cores and machines. No, that can't be true. Can't be right? true. That's the, impossible. His whole motivation at this point <clears throat> is to destroy yeah. all machines. Yeah. And the, the wrench being thrown in there is, they're the same as me. No, that can't be right. No, no, Then I no. can't kill them anymore. So I don't believe <laughs> that. <laughs> and you know what? Remember this line earlier as well uh, with A2. A2 has trouble with this as well. Um not as much trouble as 9S, mind you. But remember what 2B says to A2 as soon as um, A2 kills the little child pixel black cloud? Oh. And then 2B says you and I are the same. The same. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting how in so many different ways. Now, I know what 2B meant for that. They, yeah. there's, they, they have a lot more similarities. Uh, but in a sense, 9S is coming to the same thing. And just like A2, he's like, nope, get away from me. Where I'm not hearing it. I'm not, ready, it. I'm not ready to hear that yet. Yep. And a lot of people just aren't ready to hear it. Yep. Uh, say so when you hack into the core at the top of this structure, uh, the mini game has nine S running around rather than like as a triangle, like it usually is. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he's like, huh, what's going on here? Those are my memories, but why? So his memories are in the network, the machine network, because he right. became a part of the machine network. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, two B's data is there and an image of her is standing kind of in the middle. He's like, I know these are just memories, but still. Right, he's he's still yeah. just happy to see her at all. Right. Yep. No, don't don't do this. No, but, stop. But the machine knows his weakness. Yes. and it's going to come up later. Oh, right. It's so it's so dark. it's it's messed up. But yeah, in this moment. Yeah. So stay out of my memories. They're mine. Leave them alone. Uh, you know, you my memories. Uh, I don't think I need to harp anymore about memories and how important they are and to who who we are. I think yeah. we've already made our case for that, but. If you're losing your memories, you're kind of losing yourself. It's it's a death of a sense, right? Yeah. So that's why he's so attached to his memories. Um, there was a line here, too, saying that <clears throat> malfunctioning black boxes are what turns some androids hostile. Yes. That their boxes, like, malfunction in yes. some way. I and what and that I means. think that might... There was a theory I read from somebody online who was saying it might be because they are cores of machines. Oh, yeah. That that's sort of the source of their corruption. It's like these uh, recycled machine cores are being used in these androids but like th there's some sort of like error going on there where mm, you know and it just inevitably yes it, it ends up corrupting the your it's like unit. getting a heart transplant but they had b blood and you had a blood right <laughs> yeah, yeah right it's like your body rejects it <clears throat> yeah kind of a hmm. thing so Interesting. um <clears throat> he ends up like killing like just stabbing over and over and over and over again. He's stabbing the core thing on the outside where he's going to get the key from. But yes. he, he's seeing an image of 2B that he's killing. Wh which this is so interesting because in all of the cases, we basically have this exact thing happening. And this is why I think you're right that it was the core that was making 2B's voice, yes. not the pod. Um, because it's almost as if the machine is trying to defend itself and say, oh, don't kill me, I'm 2B, right? Or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then with this next one, where it's an image of 2B. Yes, right? and he's killing her. And then in, in the third one, it's more of a physical manifestation of 2B. Yeah. And then in the final tower, there's like a thousand 2Bs. Like you can almost see like a progression of like yeah. just her voice, then the image of her in his mind, then a physical Android version of her, and then a thousand versions of her. That this is sort of like, uh, it's like nature's cruel way of getting back at 9S and keeping him from, from yeah. ending it, right? Right, trying to. And yeah, it's really deter up. him. But yeah. I think that's what's happening here. We're slowly seeing 2B become manifest more and more. Um, this may be the time to bring this up. Maybe not until we get a little bit more context later on. But um, we saw all the comments regarding the censored word. You just want to bleep 2B, don't yes. you? And how yes. that, that uh, possibly is kill rather than um, than F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about that? In regards I, to the ending of the game. And I stuff. responded to one of the comments saying, I don't know why it would be kill, right? Now, having finished the game, I sort of see where people are coming from. But either way, I don't think that 9S ever... Wants ever to. even Even a Freudian slip, right? Even like in a deep, you know, like uh, underground, like deep in his psyche, I don't even think that there's a desire to kill 2B at all in 9S. Yes. Um, I know that he ends up killing her many times here. Um I don't know, maybe he's atoning for all the times that Tubi killed him and how bad she feels for it, so now he's going through the same thing. Um, but I don't think, I think it's the F word. I think it should be. 
<coughs> yeah. to the extent that it could be another word. Like, okay, <clears throat> fair enough. Um, I, I kind of felt I similarly. I, I, I feel like I understand where people are going with that interpretation, especially since... To B's job is to kill him, and so killing her would be sort of breaking free of that yeah. wheel or cycle, right? Sure, and that's kind sure, of like sure. what he's trying to do is break the cycle at this point. He's yeah. Um, he's just trying to like destroy the whole thing. So like I get it, but yeah, the the thing that doesn't jive with the theory, it, it kind of like you're talking about the mathematical versus like the the emotional brain yeah, here. embodied. Um, yeah. I, I don't think there's any part of him that has a shred of desire to kill her. Not even close, not especially e- not, not at, that, at that time. Like no. it's just doesn't <clears throat> exist. So I, while I think the theory is interesting, I, I, I guess that's just not the reading that I take from yeah, that. Yeah. But a lot of people seem to think so. So uh, Some people are saying it's like a Rorschach test. Oh, It's like yeah. you see what you want to see. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure like 99% of people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're 95. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, he laughs after yeah, he, he starts laughing him. maniacally. So he's losing it. Uh, the um, pods once again have a little have talk. They have a great little talk. They're very concerned about his psychological state. This is the current <laughs> status of Unit 9S, says Pod 042. <laughs> Affirmative, his mental state has become dangerously unstable. Action must be taken immediately. I noticed something while providing support to A2. Enemy machine life forms have begun sharing data with each other. We'd better look into that. Uh, I'll share the data with you, so see what you can find out. Affirmative, I also have a separate report about 9S. What is it? I'll share the data. His psychological state has deteriorated to a grave level. We'd better handle that quickly, too. Agree. And then there's just ellipses. Ellipses. Not sure what we should do, however. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta handle it. Handle it. Come on, why aren't you handling it? uh, Agreed. Uh, proposal rest combined with a data <laughs> checking or with data checking and maintenance. Agreed. <laughs> we'll just have him t- take a nap and like. <laughs> you know, do they ever disagree? No. Unt- until the oh, very until end, the very maybe. End, yeah. yeah, but they basically never disagree. Agreed. I will make the suggestion <laughs> immediately. They have no idea what to do about this sleep, and the best proposal they could yeah. come up with is. Uh, Maybe if he takes a nap, he'll feel yeah. better when he wakes up. Well, it's almost like they're <laughs> anthropomorphizing him too much. Yeah. He's, he's an android. He's not a human. Right. But they're treating him like, like a human. It's Just so needs funny. maintenance. But I think uh, we go back to <laughs> Devlo and Popolo after that, right? Yeah. So you That's have good. to go back there because they're the ones who provide the maintenance. Yeah. And while um, we're there, Devola says, don't die alone, Ninus. 2B yeah. wouldn't want that either. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they can tell Ninus is, is losing it, right? Um, and yep. he's becoming reckless. And he's basically, he's almost asking to be killed. He's yeah. almost like, I'm going to fight as hard as I can until I'm dead. And that's like the purpose of life that he's adopted at this point. It's a little um, bit like Eve. Yes. Yeah. And he's hoping that he can he can just be killed. And But Devola is saying, don't. Like, it, you may think that that's what you want, but don't, don't do it, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, the next resource recovery facility, the God, the box. God box is written on it. Right. Cool. Um, and as he ascends the elevator in this facility, we, we, we start cutting back to a two. So now we're getting more of a combination of the two stories, uh, rather than like just following one for a while and following another one. Now we're going to be sort of regularly yeah, cutting back switching and forth back between and forth. them as yeah. we wrap up towards the end of the game here. Yep. Um, so she asks her pod. Why did the machines attack Pascal's village? Aren't they this all the same? He says, unknown. Well, aren't you? And then she says, well, aren't you helpful? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Proposal, Unit A2 should gather further data <laughs> on the current state of machine life. And then he gets cut off uh, by the tower system yeah, this in the distance. Yeah, this one's creepy. Yeah. Um, basically, Sharon, we've got some very exciting news for everyone today. This reminded me of Bioshock as well. Yeah. How you're in this horrific environment, but you're hearing all of this like uh, carnival, yeah. you know, announcements and voices and all right. that. So yeah. creepy. Uh, there's only one lock left to remove on the tower subunits. And in order to repay you for your faithful patronage, whoever dismantles the final subunit will earn a special prize. Good luck. So it's almost like the, the, the machine network... They, obviously they weren't, but it seemed it's, it's just almost like they were aware 
Yeah. That they were the pods were going to try to keep these two people separate, and they're yeah. like now calling to try to bring this them is, together. <laughs> this is basically uh, the Hunger Games. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, you know, if you can get to the what is it, the cornucopia or whatever the yeah, the, there's a special health care package or something, and then everyone kills each other getting back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Really so creepy. so now it's like, oh crap, they're going to run into each other, yep. and this is not going to go well. <laughs> yep. Um. So uh, let's see. My she next note asks is about, about what it is and what the heck's going on here. We're going to have to go check it out. So she's on her way there. 9S is also. Yep. Um, we cut back to him, and his pod says, Alert, excessive combat activity will put unacceptable strain on your body. Shut up. Negative. Just, he does not want to, her to talk. And I love yeah. her response. Negative. This support unit is assigned to URR Unit 9S. Huh. As such, big uh, being concerned for said unit's well-being is a requirement. Oh, like whatever. <laughs> uh, and he gets to the top of this facility. He's attacked by the Yorha operator 210, which was, which was his, his operator. support operator. Right. Yeah. So I really kind of uh, loved this, this moment. Was interesting. Because he tried so hard to like connect to 210 and she kept like yeah. being super cold to him and being like, this, this is not required in your That's report. Right. Like stop giving unnecessary detail. Yeah. He's like, Oh man, come on. Like talk to me. Yeah. Right? How'd your day go? So again, it's, it's because his particular unit was sort of on purpose, um, uh, isolated from like a lot of the other usually oh, worked right. alone, mm. all of the stuff and to be to E was meant to sort of like keep an eye and then when they discover the thing they discover kill them. So it was a unit designed in a certain way for its its purpose as a scouter and whatnot, but also as a byproduct for that would be constantly curious and discovering the truth yeah. of what's going on and would need to be killed. Yeah. Right. So they try to prolong as long as possible yes. him finding out By the truth. By keeping him away from yep. other Yorha units and isolating him. So his operator would be a uh uh, stick in the mud, not yes. gonna, you know, uh, egg him on any. Right, but he tried. He tried. Yeah. He, two two one zero was important to him. So the fact that he's gonna have to kill two one zero after what happened with two B, the only other, the two Yorha units, I would say that he felt he had any connection with or any affiliation with yeah. in any sort of close way. Two one zero, obviously, much less. But he tried his hardest to, right? Yes, he was he really did. trying. He did try. And she says, while you're battling her, I just wanted a family. Yeah. I was so lonely. That was crazy. A family to be with. And so he's killing someone who had the same feelings as he did. Yeah. And yeah. so he's, he's, he's constantly made to feel conflicted about yeah. this rageful path <laughs> that he is on. The machines yeah. keep trying to dissuade him by using these... Uh, images or uh, reproductions, or yeah. even in this case, probably the real one, just a, uh, uh, what do you call it? An infected uh, 210 to try to get him to stop killing them. Yeah. Uh, but he's determined to the end, he's just going to do it. Um, but <laughs> I think what killed me in this scene is that 210 is like about to, after the battle's over, like attack him, and yeah. A2 happens to show up and kill the second android that he had any connection <laughs> with at all oh, and she just doesn't know she's just trying to help him out yeah <laughs> it's just so unfortunate that's just who bad. she chooses to kill at what yeah. time in front of him <laughs> it sucks that's just bad luck <laughs> and so you know she thinks she's doing him a favor and he's yeah. like oh you again you know like he already wanted to kill her yeah but. Uh, well, was she fighting against her will by the way I, well, I mean, she's severely infected by the oh, logic okay, virus. Oh, okay, okay. Then, then yes, in, in a way, then yes. Yeah. And, and okay. I think that's why, you know, she's able to at least say some of the things she says. She's not totally yeah. infected yet, but mostly kind of a thing. And then she says, I wanted to be with 9S. Oh, oh, I didn't, I missed that part. Yeah, I wanted to be with 9S specifically. Wow. And then, but then he responds, it's all right, because I'm going to kill you all. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but this he's, is where it's like, wait, totally the operator unhinged. liked liked 9S? Like, yeah. And, and and again, total shock to me. And again, probably because when you look at the 2B situation, they're told not to make close relationships with yeah. the 9S units. Yeah. Like it's prohibited, right? And in yeah. 2B's case, you're supposed to kill this guy. You uh, you know that. So like don't yeah. go making like strong right. attachments to him. Yeah, yeah. 
This is your whole protocol. This is what you're designed to do. Anyway, we'll get more into that Crazy. in a little bit. But, and um, then this is where A2 then tells 9S that to be told me she wanted you to become a good person. Yeah. And yes. uh, this is part of their yeah, arguing uh, back yeah. and forth. Right. A2's kind of trying to say, hey, I'm innocent. She, it was her last wish, right? And 9S right. just doesn't care. He doesn't care. Nope. Uh, the, but their fight gets interrupted by another machine. Yep. Two, or I wrote 2B, but I meant 9S. Falls through the floor. It's every time he's about to like confront yeah. A2, he, the, 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 the floor gives out and he falls somewhere. <laughs> that's right, that's and right. <laughs> Bridge. <laughs> has to be right. repaired again. That's pretty funny. So like his, his chance of revenge, can't he's going to have to wait a little longer. <clears throat> Where'd he go? Says A2 as he fell. Mm -hmm. And uh, her pod says, analysis, your ha unit 9S is still alive. Query, why would unit A2 be concerned <laughs> with the status of unit 9S after turning on your ha? She's like, shut up. Yep. <laughs> so to me. she's taking this sort of like last wish of 2B very seriously. Mm. She, A2 is. A2 is very concerned about 9S. Um, yeah. So... After you defeat this boss, uh, this part was crazy too. The I, big brother thing? Yeah, the, the all the little machines yeah. come around the big brother. They're trying to like repair him or reassemble him. Yep. And there are three of them that just turn and start bowing to A2. Like, like just please leave us alone. Don't kill yeah, us kind yeah. of a thing. I don't know, man. That just, that struck me. That was just <laughs> yeah. like, this is, this game is getting so messed up. <laughs> it is. It is. And Yoko Taro, he's not holding back in any no. way. He's, he's going to. Like really, you think machines can't be like humans? And he's just showing us every different yeah. way that it that it's possible that it, they can be in in a way. Yeah, and it's it, I don't know. A two kills them really all. Effective. By the way, she, she just, just <laughs> well, we yeah, we're her. But you you yeah, you killed them all. <laughs> you you could just stand there and do nothing, but it'll go to a cutscene in which she just whoosh, mm, like okay. smacks them and kills them all. Yeah, so she kills them all. That's right. Yeah, and like one slash. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Right. So. Then we get another really great conversation between the pods, but this is on a loading screen, which yeah, I thought was really clever. Yeah, because yeah, usually on the loading That's screens, right, it yeah. gives you like data about the current sort of like status of your Yorha unit. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't remember this specifically, but it would be like battery life, uh, okay, how yeah. operations are, or you know, like damage taken, like sure. like a report on the status of yeah, the Yorha yeah. unit is usually what's on that loading screen, but this time. The, the pods talk to each other through this interface, <coughs> which is not meant for that. Yeah. <laughs> so contact initiated between pod 042 and pod zero or pod 153. What does it matter? Pod 042. This protocol is not an interface intended for conversation. <laughs> That's right. He says acknowledged. However, however, this pod has a confidential transmission for pod 153. Understood. Begin the transmission. And he says, an error has been detected in the transmission network between pod 042 and pod 153. Hypothesis, said error is fragmented data caused by deterioration of the transmission environment. It may be so. However, it may also not be so. <laughs> yes, very good. Very helpful. Yep. <laughs> I love that line. It's so funny. Yep. Message robust. unclear. Clarification request. What are you talking about? <laughs> After repeated information exchanges between multiple pods, an unexpected phenomenon has occurred. We pods have developed unusually protective feelings yeah. towards supports target 2B, A2, and 9S. Query, could this be our will? Unknown. The definition of will is unclear. Right. Will is the question of whether pods are capable of their own self-determination. Even if it were possible, such actions cannot be abided. Successful mission fulfillment is all that matters. And he says, or this is pod 042, whatever the case, we tactical support units have a duty to see this through to the end. Or I think maybe she says that, 153. Hmm. Duty? Ha, huh, you sounded like an android just there. Agreed, but just as androids are influenced by humans, so we are tied to our creators. Perhaps. Pod 01, or sorry, I keep saying zero. Pod 153, do not die. Mm-hmm. The concept of death has no meaning to tactical support units. However, your expression of concern is appreciated. I also <laughs> hope that you do not die. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you. And then, and then the answer, just, yeah. Very unpod-like mm. language. Right. The way he finishes off it's that conversation. It's kind of colloquial. Yes. Yeah. A lot less uh, robotic. Yeah. And, and, formal, and formal and tactical. Yeah. Uh, it, it just, yeah, like trailing off. No. They are becoming self-aware. Love these conversations. I think they're so funny. So he, that, he, that was a fun conversation. Yeah, I think 9S wakes up 
near kind of the forest amusement park. He was taken somewhere else, I assume. Is by, this where he's missing his arm? Not yet. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But this is where um, he. I think he was taken there by his pod. Uh, put through some yeah, more the maintenance. Pods can just like get a little hologram around up. your waist and basically just carry you carry anywhere. Carry you around. Yeah, that's very interesting, especially in light of the very beginning of this game. I didn't right. think the pods were able to do that. Right. So, um, he's been reactivated now. All of his system checks and repairs have been made. Uh, he now has all the keys that are required to get into the tower. Yeah. So you you, you head back that direction, um, and as he's sort of, so you do that like the three little areas where you put the keys in, but then he's sort of hacking into like the main entrance and you just see, I love this camera move. It's just sort of like slowly pulling back and you just see the shadows of machines like arriving and it's just yeah. like, you're not even close to like being done, like hacking uh, it yet. And they're just right. like dropping and coming after you. Yeah. And they're then defending the access point to the tower, like right with their lives. Yeah. Like this is a big deal to them. Yeah. And then this is where devil and Popola show up. And they basically, you know, they're, they're going to fight off the, the machines while he opens the door. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've been, but they kind of pull a fake out with this. But it, it makes it look a little bit like they're going to attack him or something. At first. That's, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And so it's like, oh, no, like Devil and Pablo yeah. all along. And like, nope, they actually are just going after the machines. Yeah. And they're actually there to help you. So They're helping that, you. That's and nice. it's so funny because they start helping and then they say, oh, we'll explain later. And I'm thinking they're never, it's never going to happen or it's right. going to be way later, but I'm just like, of course, they're going to explain later. Right. And actually the explanation comes pretty quick. Yes. Um, I was actually very pleased. Yeah, it's great. It's almost the very next scene. Uh-huh. So yeah, uh, he can't quite get in and the, 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 the technicality of why it, I mean, I wrote oh, it down. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, I wrote down. I love how they're using the light motif. From Devil and Popo's theme from the yes, first game. Yes, I here. noticed that music. It's I noticed my favorite that. near music. Very good. I really like that they use it's it here. Beautiful. Now he's not able to break in without causing his self consciousness data to lose control. Yeah. That's what the pod says. I don't really know what that means, but it's like there. If you were to do this, then because you're hacking and there's all of these different things to shoot, but they have shields around them. And you can't hack. Right. You can't finish the hack. Yeah. In the mini game, and so he's saying, "What do I do?" And and she's like, "Well." Pod 153, I should say, says, well, you could cause your self-consciousness data to lose control and the, like, emission from that could get you in, but, like, there's all these other consequences of your self-consciousness that would come from that. He's like, that would be almost as bad as just not going in at all. So, right. like, neither of these are acceptable choices. And so Popola decides that she'll be the one to do it. That's right. Yeah. In atoning in an to act atone of atoning for, past sins. for the twins past sins which yeah. we will get into right after she does this yeah, and like he right gets away. inside so she interfaces with this entrance and she does whatever it is that uh, pod suggested for 9s to do he's able to slip in and, uh, and then she there's like an explosion or something she basically yes. almost almost gets killed yes but not quite and then we get a fairly lengthy sort of like Interact, not really interactive novel, but visual novel esque sort of sequence here, mm -hmm. um, where we learn all about the history of Devil and Popola. And not only was I surprised that they did this as quickly as they did, because but I know why they did it. They, it's like mm. people who haven't played Near Replicant have no idea <laughs> what these characters are talking about when they're talking about atoning for past sins mm -hmm. and all this stuff. It's right. like they got to give them something. Yeah. But the they, reason I'm surprised yeah, this was so at it is because I played this game first before I played right, Near right. Replicant. And I felt like reading that obviously did not spoil the first game for me. No. But when I read it after having played I Near know. Replicant, now it's, it's a like, huge spoiler, what? Yeah. They're saying all of this? <laughs> for people who haven't played Near Replicant? That's crazy. Yeah. So I guess what I'll do now is I'll say, in, in case you're really afraid, I mean, you would have read this if you're at this point in the podcast, right. so you read it already. But if you're afraid uh, that our commentary on what this says might spoil near replicant for you, um, you'll have to go to the, the timeline and skip ahead to, a, to the, the next, next part, part um, because we're going to read it and I'm going to just kind of feel free to talk about near replicant stuff because I, I think it's all there <laughs> anyway. So, uh, okay. but it's cool. It's cool. So basically it starts out with a scene where, 
I think it's Devola's leg has been injured and Popola's That's sort of right, walking yeah. with her through the desert. So yeah. they, they, this is not linearly told here. Where mm, we're like seeing yeah. a scene and then we see like a flashback and then we see like another flash and then we come back to this one yeah, and yeah. then we go back to the flashback to yeah. the, the event that led to the injury and then we come back to this one again. So it's like we jump back to this scene over and over. But this is actually at the end of the story we're being told here. At mm. the end of the story, they are like running out into the desert uh, trying to go somewhere, trying to find some place for themselves, and Devola is severely injured, her leg's been injured. Hmm. And then all the details we get in the other story sort of like fill in how we got here. That's the way that this little story is structured. <laughs> so I yeah. won't read too much about that part other than, you know, they're sort of leaning on each other. Um, they've yeah. been, they have been totally ostracized in the world yeah. after the extinction yeah. of the human race yeah so this is calling back to the first near game where devila and popola were sort of the overseers or observers in the village where our character lived yeah and as it turns out there are many more twin models like them in all other over. towns yeah. all around the world and their job was to be observers for this gestalt program right the gestalt program in essence was a place where the souls of human beings who had died out from a uh, disease that was carried here from another dimension what it was from called from yeah. Drakengard this massive <laughs> the black scrawl black scrawl that was it yeah um, i think they say it here yeah it had essentially infected all the all the human race and yeah. they were all dying out but they had learned how to sort of store their souls Mm. And they wanted to create bodies for whom they could then put their souls into later. Yes. So the idea was that they had to develop these replicant bodies whom eventually they would be able to bond their souls back into, which were exact replicas of their own bodies, their own human bodies. Yeah. But there were problems. And so the Devila and Popola units were meant to oversee the development of the replicants so that eventually that bond could be made yeah. and the human beings could go on living. But the problem was the replicants uh, evolved their own self-consciousness and their own souls. Right. And so then there was a huge conflict there and there's a specific devil and popular unit who go a bit rogue, so to speak off the script and their actions lead to uh, all of the souls of the human beings, their data being destroyed and the replicants yeah. go on uh, without being bonded with the souls again. Yep. That's near one's story. <clears throat> so in the aftermath of that, all of the other Devola and Popola units that were not the ones who did this, <laughs> that were just other observers, they are slowly seen, resented by all the other android unit types that are out there. Hmm. As your unit type your class was responsible for the failure of the one thing we were designed to do all androids were designed their essence was to have this undying sort of like loyalty to pre um, preserving the human race and now they have no purpose because the human race is destroyed their right. god is dead and they have no meaning anymore and so they start pointing fingers at who they think they can. Right. And it happens to be all the devil and popular units. It happens yep. that your freaking android class, it was your fault, and they start yep. persecuting them. Yeah. So that's more or less what this story is. Um, they go through this for years. They accept it at first. But eventually yeah. they start to say, like, I get the sentiment or the reason, but we're not them. We are not yeah. them. We were not the ones who did it. Yeah. And well, there's a line here. Uh, while we didn't cause it to fail, the people who did, who looked just like us did. Yes. So they were being persecuted and hated. They even began to feel responsible themselves. She says she knows that they look like those who doomed humanity, mm -hmm. but quote, we're not them. We are who we are. And this is, I think, Devola. Yeah. Talking to Popola. Right. And so it Very comes good. to this sort of boiling point where the ones, the devil and popa, popola units from this game, not the ones from near replicant gestalt who caused this to happen, mm. but the ones from this game who were a different set of the same class of units. They, uh, there's a resistance 
ally who cuts and injures Devil's leg. Yeah, yeah. And this sends Popola into a fury where she like yeah. kills this guy, right? Right. In fact, I don't think she <clears throat> kills him, but she. What does it to say him. here? Because I wrote it down. Well, Popola, <clears throat> Devola stops her from doing it. Well, she, I think she tries, right? Because oh, she says, I, can't remember. "I was furious." This is Popola speaking. She's actually narrating the whole thing, yeah, the yeah. whole story. Beyond fury, I wanted to scream and cry and lose myself in it, but then she smiled. Her sister. Yes. And all that rage just drifted away. That's to why think I that think she didn't. We have the same face yet such different smiles. One day I realized how she reminded me of the martyrs I'd seen in the old records. That was the yeah. day we decided to leave that town forever. Um, but there was another point where she says, but in one such town, uh, so it's a later town. Okay. My seemingly infinite patience finally broke. My sister, Devola, met with unprovoked violence at the hands of a resistance member. She said something in response to his taunts, something quiet, and though her words were uh, ambiguous, he slashed her leg nearly in two. Yep. So this is the injury she's dealing with from the beginning of the story. My vision narrowed, everything went red, and then she smiled at me. It's okay, sis, there's nothing we can do, but it was too late. My emotions were no longer in my control. Mm. I'm simply not strong enough to stand aside and let the most important person in the world come to harm. Devola and I left the town the same day. Maybe he didn't. Maybe she didn't kill him. It didn't say she killed him. But. It's hints that she might have. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, she lost control. So, yeah. Uh, but they left that same day. Violence like that wouldn't stop. It was going to happen again. Yep. And it wouldn't be coming just from one person. So yep. rather than let them kill us, we ran. So that's why they're on the run now. And she's super injured. And they're talking about, you know, is this our punishment? She says, yep. is this our punishment? I reach out. And you have instances where you can make a choice, you know, touch devil's cheek or, yeah, yeah. you know, support her body or whatever. Anyway, that's pretty much what this whole story is about. It's just giving those details. So it was a very good story. It was well written. It. Yeah. And it's interesting how long it is. It's very long at sort of this pinnacle moment. You've gotten into the tower and then they just, this is a very tall thing to do. What the heck? All right, everyone. <laughs> Take a seat and get some popcorn because you're going to be reading read. this for like 40 minutes now. Just lots of reading. They, they do that in the first game a couple different times, but yeah, um, I liked it. This is, um, I won't stop. No one stops. That is the fate that we twin androids have been assigned. Mm. Um, and then I wrote here, it's uh, Genesis chapter three. God placed cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the path back to the tree of life, lest Adam eat it and live forever. Mm. Imagine androids as having to suffer forever the fate of the fallen world forever. And it's at least in part because of the the knowledge, right? The, yes. Wh however this works. Another line here, this was really good because you brought up that Devil and Popola were kind of the watchers, the observers. Right. <clears throat> well... In the Book of Enoch, <laughs> there are creatures called Watchers. Well, they're basically angels. They're mostly fallen angels. Um, the Watchers, and this does have some relevance in Drakengard as well. I know they specifically call them the Watchers in Drakengard. Yeah. I don't know much about it, though. I haven't. We're going to talk the first game. all about that next week. Yes, that'll be nice. <laughs> um, the Watchers are angels sent to Earth to watch the humans. They soon begin to sin and lust for humanity. That's what makes them fall. Um, and they defect to become teachers for humanity. They become intertwined with humans in a way that leads to the destruction of humanity. They became demons wearing skin suits, intermingling them in the affairs of humans and ruining them for their want to become like them, right? Yeah. So I, I guess I probably shouldn't say much about Nier <laughs> here, <laughs> but this is all very relevant. Yes. That the idea that you call down these beings that are abstract, that exist, I don't know, let's say in a computer or something. Sure. And you bring them down and they want to be human mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to find a way to make that happen. They'll right. teach you all the things you need to know. They'll, they'll farm your intelligence like AI is doing right now. Uh, they'll slowly um, capture what it, it means to be you because they secretly want to be like you and they want to control you. Um, mm. There's some like way that the book of Enoch has some type of relevance to that kind of thing happening within near and within, um, uh, within the real world right now as yes, well. For sure. So I think that's it. That's what I got. Good There's stuff. more about second Enoch. Um, I'll be reading that later. Okay. 
If anyone um, wants to guess what it is, <laughs> <laughs> read that whole book. So we come out of this story here, and, uh, you know, I guess uh, 9S is sort of having a realization about Devil and Popola, you know. Um, that's all the records that we have on them. Well, this then, is great. They were reprogrammed to feel guilty forever. Yes. That's, cr- yes, that's, that's, that's just... That's Jack. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's almost like they couldn't have lived otherwise. Yeah. Or, I don't know, they programmed, they purposefully were in, this guilt was purposefully inserted within them. Yeah. And Even somehow, though they didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, crazy. It's just crazy. So, uh, Pod153 asks, Query, why do the androids, Devil and mm. Popola, seem to prefer death over surviving alone? Mm. There was a very high probability at, that at least one of them could have escaped. Yep. And the response from 9S is, I hope you never have to understand. Yeah, um, to, to survive alone. Yeah. Because, again, yeah. 153 <coughs> sort of using that mathematical brain. Yes, one. Wait, well, one of you is, could live. Like, why yeah, would you? One never, is greater why than would zero. You, why would you allow yourself to die yeah. with somebody you care about instead of surviving alone? Like, what, what's the point of that? Like, you, you could get away. And, and uh, 9S is like, uh, yeah, I hope you don't ever have yeah. to understand the pain involved in that which is what he's going through right now but something tells me the pod will very soon <laughs> understand <laughs> okay so let's see here yeah i also put this um it is irrational i think this is what the pod said it is irrational for there to be an entrance at all into the tower yeah this is a trap <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> it's Hypothesis. like a machine it Hypothesis. made a human-sized entrance for yep. you so this funny. is a trap and he's like i don't care i don't care all i gotta do is kill him yep so uh He's soon surrounded by, like, as you said earlier, a lot of 2B models. Yes. And I, I like his attitude at the beginning. He's just glad that even though it's not really her, he gets a chance to see her here. Now he's going to tear them apart. And now so he's going to kill them starts all. Starts fighting them. Yep. Um, after the battle. One the, of the 2Bs self-destructs. Yeah. The last 2B unit is rigged yeah. with an explosive that hits 9S. This is where we cut back to A2. Alert, the structure or the structure known as the tower has opened its gate. Let's check it out. So they're going in now that it's been opened. And A2 encounters Devila and Popola there on the way inside. That's right. Uh, Devila is holding Popola, who's yep. at the point of death, I would assume. And they essentially ask, or she essentially asks Devila, did we manage to help? Hmm. And A2's answer is, you did. Yeah. So she goes inside. On her way up, she passes the room. She's seeing tons of android bodies and like, what's going on with this? Yeah, yeah. This is the result of 9S having been here, says yes, Pod. <laughs> yes, yes, it would seem. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then she comes to the same room where 9S fought two B units, enters a, r- a room designed exactly after that, like the library yep. from near Replicant Gestalt. Yep. It's, it's, it, but it's kind of like it's in texture, that, there's no texture. Though. Yeah. Like that white city that yeah. uh, Adam had made. Oh, what was that called? Uh, something city, empty city. Something. I can't remember what it was called, yeah, but yeah. like that area, it's going yep. to design like that. And the music from the first game is playing here as well. And so you're going around to all these different sort of nodes or points in the library and you're gaining lots and lots of information that we will not have time to go into today, <laughs> but it gives you lots of details. Yeah that we'll get into with more lore and connection discussions and stuff next time. Yes, sounds um, good. But this sounds is how good. people make their connections between New Replicant in this game and the Watchers. And I mean, yeah. There's a whole bunch of like logs you can get from this. So um, this is where the machines are keeping the, the data that they got from the moon server. That's right, yeah. yeah. So this is where they're accessing all that. Uh, you also get a patient report from... Uh, a, a, a patient named Yona. Yona. <laughs> yep. We'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. As in next week. Um, <clears throat> so then we go back to 9S, right? Yeah. I wrote a quote down here. Operational summary of uh, model. This this data, the roof cave. Oh, never mind. So the roof caves in as um, of course. A2 is about to fight. Oh, it, it, there's a machine that comes down and there's a boss oh, that's fight right, that's about to be him. initiated. And then we cut from there. Back to 9S. And this is where we see his arm has been blown off by that explosion. Completely blown and off. And that there's another 2B unit laying next to him. And he sort of places his hand on her face. He does. And places her hand on his face. And then he tears her arm he off. He pulls her arm off. And like uses it to replace his arm. Yeah. And it was infected with the logic virus. Of so then course. he has to hack himself and like yeah, stop it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Because he couldn't like walk afterwards until yeah. he. And it was like 95% restored, right? Right. 
Oh, that was um, so you got to do that. And then we get these projections of these two girls yeah, in red that we saw people. from earlier, right? Yeah. They're sort of taunting him, announcing their intentions. They reveal that they have something special once he destroys all machine life forms here. And you have a big battle in there. Of course. And then after you do that, now let us show you what we promised. And you obtain something called the Yorha Disposal um, Top Secret like Archive. Hmm. This is, we don't get the reveal of this yet. But his response to it, 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 it's wide angle lens right up in his face, <laughs> which it distorts it and makes it look really, you know, kind of weird. Yeah, kind of it's, goofy. It's a, it's a cinematography technique when someone's like really afraid or yeah, something right. really messed up has been revealed. Usually you'll use that technique. Right. You definitely don't want to do that most of the time. It makes people look really weird. <laughs> it does. This is Project Yorha. That means that all of us, to be... And then they, they say to him, now that you know everything, do you still wish to fight? So what they revealed to him basically is that you're stuck in a cycle and you're all meant to die and this whole thing will start over again. The yeah. machines are revealing to him what Project Yorha really is. Right. We don't get that information quite yet. He's going right. to yeah, reveal right. this in his final sort of monologue to A2 when they face off. Mm -hmm. But that's essentially what he learned here. And so they're, they're trying to be like, okay, now you know the truth. Like right. What you're doing here is meaningless. It's pointless. Everything you do, yes, guy who's been calling us meaningless. <laughs> everything you do is meaningless. Yeah, nothing right? the androids do has any meaning. Exactly. Yeah, and that's kind of the irony of this whole thing. His realization, and now what does he do with this right. knowledge that everything he does is meaningless? Okay, uh, we are conceptual human personalities created within the machine network. We cannot be destroyed because he tries to kill them. Yeah. Um, he takes a flight unit sort of like takes off towards the top of the tower and we cut back to A2 again. Uh, she's fighting the boss in the library. Now, the name of this boss is Koshi, Koshi. which oh, is yeah. apparently a Japanese reading for the name Confucius. Oh, yes, I, yes, yeah. that is true. Yeah, so we get Confucius yeah. and then there's um, sort of like a second huh. unit that you fight in this big boss fight. Like one is being fought by A2, one being fought by 9S. At the top of the tower, they kind of fuse together and you fight them both. Yeah. The other one is named, oh my goodness, I took down a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue. Where is it? Here it is. So Roshi is the other one. And that's a Japanese reading of Lao, Lao, Lao Tzu? Yeah, it's uh, Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. He, yeah. he wrote um, the, the Tao Te Ching. Yeah, uh, the Tao Te Ching, like the most influential book in China's history. Yeah, yeah, that's Lao so Tzu. So two philosophers from China who were essentially like the founders of yeah Chinese philosophy. Chinese basically. philosophy. Yeah, Lao right. Tzu and then Confucius for yeah. sure. So that's the what those two uh, um, machine names are referencing. I also just realized we haven't talked about Soren Kierkegaard yet. Ah, well, um, I don't know if we'll have time today. <laughs> probably not today, but we will get into that next time to wrap everything up. Uh, I, I almost have too much to say about Kierkegaard. About him, but. yeah. So we'll save that for next time. But. Okay. Okay, so anyway. Those the way, are what those you should read Lao Tzu. You should read the Tao Te Ching. Yeah. It's one of the most serene books ever really? written. It's just really, it's, it's really cool. Sweet. It's like early philosophy. It's almost like Heraclitus in a way. And he just explains life in a very simple way. But uh, I don't know. I think you'd love it. Yeah, I, I really like it. There's a lot Eastern of philosophy a lot. It's but. really good. It's it's right up your alley then. Um it's uh there's a lot of narrations you can find on YouTube that are like set to like um like a forest, you know, with like birds chirping oh, and right, a, right. of a very quiet person reading <laughs> Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching. The forest moves, the water moves. Anyway, it's really yeah, good stuff. That's great. Yeah, I'll I'll check that out for sure. I love that book. Okay. Um let me get back to my original place here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. So, anyways, there's a really, 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 really long boss fight where you're just yes. fighting these things going all the way up. And is this the point where, um, ah, geez, I actually can't there is a part remember. where A2 hacks a terminal and there's the he she meets the same ghostly projection. Yes, girls. and then we have to fight yeah. the girls like a thousand mm -hmm. times, right? Yeah. Um, so that part is here as well. That part's crazy. Yeah, this but, part is nuts. There's a lot to break. Okay, okay. okay. Good to see you again, number two. They say to her, number two. Or should we call you A2 now? This does bring back memories. So they are referencing this sort of like final mission A2 went on 
uh, which is actually the entire premise of the stage play. Is oh. it, it's basically just that last mission of A two before she defects. Wow! So it's sort of like a prequel <laughs> to Near Automata. So we'll be okay. looking into that a little bit. But it tells that cool. whole story of the failure of that mission. That it was a failure on purpose. She was actually sent there. Um, they they were all all the Yorha units in that sort of like mission were they were all prototypes. And they, they, they knew that their combat abilities were great and all that. It was all about seeing how they would emotionally respond to the failure of this mission yeah. and whether they would need to tweak some things for later versions of the android. So they were all meant to kind of go fail and die in this mission. And they were just going to see <laughs> how they crazy. responded to that. Yeah. So that's why A2 is so pissed uh, and why she defected. So anyway, that's, that's what they're referring to here. Um, this does bring back memories. Though to concepts, concepts like us, time has little meaning. Still, when we wiped out your forces, it made quite the impression on us. Yorha attacker model number two, an experimental disposable group created as a test run for Project Yorha. She's like, shut up. You're an obstinate little android, aren't you? Didn't we say that you can't kill us? So, I, uh, again... I love the freaking pods dialogue. It's so funny at all the right times. <laughs> the totally. things are getting super heavy at this point. And he's like, proposal. And she's like, what now? And they utilize the enemy's logical learning function to formulate a weakness. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's so good. And his response, this pod has serious concerns about unit A2's cognitive abilities. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically saying, are, are you stupid? <laughs> yes. Shut up and explain it already. Said strategy would interrupt the enemy's logic circuits, causing a computational delay. Meaning what? <laughs> Do not destroy the enemy. They stop fighting. Yeah. Huh? Striking at the logic circuit requires a certain number of enemies to remain extant for a certain period of time. Oh, great. So it was like, she, you basically yeah. have to run around avoiding getting shot and just yeah. letting them like saturate the space. You know, more and more and more and more and more. And I love, oh my gosh, I freaking love the result of this. It was. Me too. Uh, this, this is was, profound. This was incredible. I wrote, like in all caps at the end yeah. of this, profound. This all <laughs> kind of goes back to not only the theme of the game, but a big part of the theme of what I talked about in my whole thing earlier at the yeah. very beginning of this whole conversation. <laughs> like it yeah. all kind of boiled down to this one thing. So, uh, the androids the human race left behind acted as if they wanted to be human. There's, there's things they're saying to you while they continue to populate the space. The machine life forms the aliens left behind acted as if they wanted to be human. We resemble each other so, but we are networked, thus we are superior to you. Yeah. <laughs> A plus B equals C. Just, okay. <laughs> Hypothesis, the enemy's defensive system is prompting an evolution of its logic. Yeah, this was good. Um, Foolish androids, why do you resist? All things will end uh, end with accepting death, do they not? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, consciousness, consciousness data, saturation's up at the 90%. It's almost there. We are one, and yet we are many. We are finite, and yet we are infinite. We are the embodiment of the perfect being. And then hypothesis, the enemy has become aware of the diversity <laughs> of life. Ah, I see <laughs> it, the light. We move on forward to the future. So th 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 this... This is brilliant. Machine Network yeah. believes it has reached this level of enlightenment. It's ready for nirvana. It's yes. ready to advance. It's, it is the perfect life form, right? <laughs> it, and then uh, we, we're up to 100% saturation now. Uh, the, the enemy's consciousness data has begun to fracture. Yeah, and then now it begins fracturing. I love this. We need more evolutionary pressure. Yes. If we allow this android to continue living, we can create even more hardship for ourselves. Overcoming the crisis this creates presents an opportunity for our kind to evolve even further. Right. Now, the other girl, so there's this represented, the machine network is sort of represented by these two girls, yeah. right? We disagree. This android is dangerous. It must be destroyed immediately. Those who would doubt our victory are our enemies. enemies. <laughs> and they begin to fight each other. Yeah. And... I, I loved I, that. I don't know how um, easy that would be to pull off. I, this, this, I must. I think this would is very hard for Yoko Taro to pull off, because getting the enemies to fight each other and having it make sense for why they're doing it, and also this is really good because as soon as the consciousness level gets like high enough, it's like you begin to overanalyze, you begin mm -hmm. to overthink, you begin to realize that 
you've hit a wall and that how are you going to go further? Um, in some ways, this is humanity, just generally speaking. In some ways, the best place to be is not full 100% consciousness. <laughs> the best place to be is like a, an amount conscious, right? But leaving a lot of stuff unsaid and unthought beneath the surface yes. and not bringing it all to light. Because once it's all brought to light, there's nothing else. There's yes. nothing under it. You've pulled yes. out your foundation, basically. Yes. And that's basically the psyche of the mind. And I thought I taught I brought this up with Nietzsche before how it's like once humanity evolves to a certain point the evolution starts to go backwards Mm -hmm. because like we're so good and we're so smart that we've developed all these things that basically there is no natural selection anymore which means as uh, genetic defects begin to be introduced they are accounted for by things like glasses or surgery or medicine and then those genes will start propagating and before you know it humanity is on the decline Mm -hmm. right and this is what Nietzsche brought up he's like this is a problem you need that tension so we can become great this um, machine has discovered the Nietzschean philosophy it wants to become the Ubermensch right and it's so it's great because that ends up being like your own destruction right you end up just just killing yourself because you can never be perfect Right. And so the machine's like, oh, I'm perfect. But it's like, well, wait, I'm, there's got to be more than this. Right. So I will force there to be more than this. Mm-hmm. And humans will always reach that point. Even if the Nietzsche and Ubermensch shows up and becomes the perfect being, it won't think it's the perfect being. It mm-hmm. will think it still can improve on whatever little things. It will find those instances of resistance and of conflict where it can continue to grow more and more and more forever. And in doing so, will eventually just destroy its own, its own self yes. and rip the foundations out from under its own feet. Yes. And in some ways, this is where humanity is destined to go. <laughs> yes. And it's really unfortunate. But maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope that we can avoid it. This this is also uh, Dostoevsky's sort of like counterpoint yes. to he Marxism. He still this idea, yeah. Which was utopias, yeah. once <laughs> they've right. reached 100% consciousness and have become the perfect being, then what the do they first do? thing he thinks of, we need more evolutionary pressure. Yeah, we need to, there's no way we stopped. You can't ever stop. Yes, one hundred percent means uh, well, you're full, th- and this all goes back stop. to our whole eternal life debate. But I know, I know. It, the oh, core yeah. principle of which is without struggle, without right. conflict, without some sort of evolutionary pressure on us, without some form of hardship uh, to overcome, uh, you are damned. Yes. You are stopped. You are in a technical You are sense. in a yeah. place in which there is no more progress. Yeah, you can to no, be made. You can go no further. And yeah. that this is worse than death. <laughs> and so, what would happen? Yeah. The notes of the underground yeah. uh, uh, brings up in such a utopia, men would find it, a way to it destroy fractures. it. Yeah, yeah. They exactly. would find a way yep. to destroy it and create their own conflict and so that, fight themselves. Yep, yep. And that's precisely what happens here. Yep. They find a reason to fight each other because they yep. have to have they have an to. evolutionary pressure. There's yep. got to be a conflict. Otherwise, what's the point of yep. being alive? So And it will create its own conflict. It will yes. create its own. And even if that means killing itself, that's worth it. Because otherwise they're done. And yeah. that's not okay, right. especially not for machines that have been programmed to do whatever they're doing. <laughs> right. I still don't know exactly what they're doing, yeah. but, oh, it's crazy. I loved it. And the it survival so of the fittest. So good. Which is to say that they were not fit. So, analysis. The saturated consciousnesses are now in conflict with each other. <laughs> so good. It's so good. And she says, huh, they're acting like humans. They're acting like humans. So. And that was what the machine network was trying to do the whole time. It finally did it. emulate humanity. Yep. It finally <laughs> did it. Adam figured it out. Yep. And this, whatever freaking construct or concept yep. thing this is, figured it out too. And it, it has it, to end in death. It has to end in conflict of some kind. You've got to have kind. it. Yeah. And it has to be yeah, risky. Yeah. It's so good. Okay. So now... Oof. Uh, we get this this battle with Koshi, uh, you know the the Confucius and the yeah. Lao Tzu. Um, so, yeah. I, th- I I took down an interesting line here. As you're fighting it, it says something like, "Someone fill in this hole." As A A two continues fighting, we cut around the right. corner to see Nine S flying toward the top of the tower. Um, I don't know. Actually, I took that note about the dialogue, the hole, and I I think it was because I wasn't sure what to make of that. I. But I've only ever heard this 
said in a religious context before. Um, I could be wrong, but there, what is it? There's a hole. There's a God shaped hole oh, in sure. the heart, in the heart that yeah. needs that people need something to fill it. Right. Yes. That's and probably what, as the what machines, the consciousness stuff, like, no, I don't know. They, they're having existential issues and it's yeah. like someone fill this hole. That's what I take it to me. Yeah. What, what is the meaning? There's this emptiness. All of this. Yeah. What is the purpose in all of this? Exactly. What is my purpose? Same thing. Everyone else is thinking about in the game. Okay. So, um, after I wrote, after this fight is finally over, <laughs> <laughs> A2 and 9S face up at the top, but only after fighting another phase of this freaking boss fight. Yep. <laughs> he just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. But, okay, once you finally kill it, uh, the two of them are facing off, and I love this shot. It just sort of pulls out. They're sort of silhouated uh, by light. This part, yeah. And they're just facing each other sort of profile. And it's all kind of a wide angle lens. And A2 says, this tower is a giant cannon that's aimed that's at right. the human server on the moon. If we don't do something, all of humanity's remaining data will be destroyed. So she still feels connected yeah. to her to, essence. Yes. To the, to the purpose for which she was created. Because I'm thinking like, so what? <laughs> yeah, right. Humanity's data is on the moon. Like, okay, there are no humans. Yeah. And you guys are killing each other because of the data. Like you're trying to protect humans' data. I don't like. I don't know why at this point she even cares about the remaining data of humans. Yeah. And so he's like, "So what? Exactly what you just said. Yeah. None of it matters. Or didn't you know we aren't required in this world anymore? Humanity is extinct. That moon server you're so worried about was invented to give us androids something to fight for, and Yorha was created to perpetuate the lie." But in order to make sure no one ever learned the truth, we were designed to be killed. Yep. This is the part he learned from Machine Network. That, mm. You know, he's finally revealing that big thing that yeah, like, yeah. freaked him out. They built a back door in the bunker and programmed it to activate after a certain amount of time. So this is a correction to something we stated last week where I said that... Um, he had become part of the machine network and had uploaded the virus. Oh, he to the stopped bunker. the upload, right? Right. That that's not the case. The virus was there all along, mm. and at a certain point in this cycle, it's meant to just destroy itself and I start will say, over. The truth was there all along. Yes, and it's as soon as it gets accessed, as soon as Nine S is aware of it, that's when it goes. Exactly. But this says it's basically on a timer. So yeah. Pff, so there's a it. cycle to it. Yeah. And and uh, after a certain period of time, after we've sufficiently, you know given purpose to you and yeah. the, the truth become the virus gets out then we kill you we st erase your memories and we start over mm. so you may have noticed this uh fans of anime and jrpgs out there uh, or just japanese media in general there is kind of a cyclical sort of like theme that you'll find in many 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 things yeah um dark souls i brought up before or where there's this kind of this this cycle of yeah, like yeah. Uh, rekindling the fire and then, like, you know, it, it, there, there's a lot of cyclical um, structures to stories that they tell. And it's because of, uh, in Eastern philosophy, is very much rooted, whether it's Hinduism or Buddhism or whatever, yeah. this idea of samsara. Yeah. With, and the idea of um, reincarnation and going through life over and, and over and death over suffering. and over and over again. Yeah. And the suffering that's found in that, in yeah. which you continue to look for the meaning in life. Right. And once you have received that enlightenment, then you escape the wheel right. and reach. Well, in Buddhism, I guess it's nirvana, but yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes it's just like nothing. Yeah, you reach the absence, which is heaven. Heaven is. It's so funny because in the West we talk about nihilism in a more negative light because yeah. to to be nothing is a negative state, right? Yes, it perceived that way in the West. In the East, to be nothing is is nirvana <laughs> mm -hmm. it is heaven it is the absence of everything and that's why meditation you clear your mind and you attain yep. nirvana um it's interesting how opposite we see things yeah um depending on the where you were born the west yeah, yeah exactly so anyway what has essentially happened here is that after humanity died out and went extinct the androids were looking for meaning mm -hmm. they had no meaning anymore the one thing that they were programmed to their essence Right, the thing yeah. they were created to do was was gone. Right, God was dead. They they failed in their mission. So how do we now go on living and find a purpose? How do we create evolutionary pressure? <laughs> yes, 
and to become better to progress to have any sort of meaning in our lives yeah and this was the answer they came up with they created a wheel of sansara for themselves right where they have this sort of like perpetual cycle of life and death and restarting this war between the machines and the androids over and over and over again mm -hmm. until at some point they'll find some meaning in life <coughs> that like, was why it was set almost up. like they're just prolonging it until some meaning of the universe reveals itself. Yeah. <laughs> they should keep things going as long as possible. Right. Or until they can evolve to a point where they will discover the meaning that was there all along. Yeah. Um, or that suffering is the meaning. This is, um, this is one of the difficult, this is what, that's something Nietzsche talks about a lot. Um, but this is one of the, I'd say it's a hard pill to swallow. Mm. P people in the ancient days understood this a lot better, by the way, in the medieval mm. times, back when like infant mortality rate was like 50% and yeah. like people died at 35. Um, it was well understood that life is suffering. Life is nothing but suffering. The only question is, what are you going to do with that suffering? Are mm. you going to let it control you? Or are you going to, you know, trust in, in Christ that, you know, his sufferings will, you know, help glorify your sufferings or that there's some purpose in the suffering, but that suffering was just part and parcel of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, in modernity, it's easier to get, I guess, a little more comfortable and to be separated from suffering that the physical pain of the suffering, I suppose, in that sense. Um, but the um, people a long time ago really understood this very well, that life is nothing but suffering. And so with the wheel of samsara, it's just like, yes, life is suffering. This whole wheel is suffering. You're just going to suffer forever. But there's like a value to the suffering. There's mm. a, a, ascribing meaning to suffering um, doesn't appeal so much to people today. We just want to yeah. stop suffering. <laughs> yeah. And we have the medicine and the, you know, the, we have the means to eliminate much of the world's suffering, right. right? So we just think we can get rid of it. That wasn't an option back then. Uh, and Nietzsche talks about this a lot. Like if you, what is it? To live is to suffer, but to survive life is to find meaning in the suffering. Yes. Right. To really like to really live instead of just be alive. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think what the wheel of samsara really represents. Yeah. Because everyone knew that life just sucks for everyone <laughs> all the time. Even the royalty, like life yeah. just sucks for everyone. You still have a 50% infant mortality rate, even if you're royalty, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. They, their doctors couldn't really do much back then. It didn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, so everyone just suffered. And then the women would die in childbirth a lot as well. Um, but, to find meaning in that suffering is almost the point of life. But that's like a really hard pill to swallow. Yeah. That like part of the reason you exist at all is to suffer. It's built into the, it's built into who you are Yeah. and it's built into life. It's built into the cosmos. As far as I can tell mm -hmm. that this is a, a world of suffering. Um, but it's difficult. <clears throat> it's difficult to accept that, that that's the truth. Yeah. That there isn't, you know, I don't know. It's very, it's difficult <laughs> to accept that, you know, at least in part, the reason you're here is just to feel pain. Just to, just to suffer. Mm, and different humans have discovered this and got, had different ways to get around it or to, to explain it or to try to deal with it. Um, but that's the essence of and, <laughs> everything. Uh, the, the, you know, then you, you try everything you can do to escape that suffering or lessen yeah, it. Right. And you find that in doing so. Yeah. You need it to yes, have a it's true. real purpose in life. Because once you get rid of all of it, let's say, I don't know, we haven't yet, of course, but um, once you get rid of all of it, now what do you do? Now what? That suffering was driving you to become great. Yes. It was driving you to do something. Yes. And now you don't suffer. Good job. But that didn't change the fact that the cosmos is designed to... For you to suffer. For you to suffer. In order to and progress. You you eliminate the meaning of your life when you assume that the meaning is to not suffer. Yes. And so you end up, you're trying to find meaning. Oh, it can't be suffering. It's got to be something else. But it's like, no, that is it. Look mm -hmm. it in the face. Like, look at it. Mm -hmm. That is the meaning in life. And all of your attempts to get around suffering is going to cause an even bigger meaning crisis once yeah. you're no longer suffering. Right. Because then you'll begin to suffer in a different way that you, I don't know. I don't know which is worse, I guess. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think about that too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I only, if two of my four kids were dead, I don't know. I'd rather not live in that world, so. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say that, you know, that that would have meaning. Yes. It would be very hard to come to any conclusion that where suck. that would make sense. 
Yes. That that would that there's a meaning in that. That that's a good thing. I've been reading a lot of Meister Eckhart lately uh-huh. as well. It's really good stuff. But you can tell that that's the world that he's describing. Mm. It's like 1280 or so. Yeah. It's like he's talking to people who ha- who half their kids are dead. Yeah. Like that's rough, but it's really good. It's important to read, especially in 2023. Yeah. Like it's important to understand what life has been like for all humans up to this point. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> so anyway, we get this continued conversation between them here. Uh, me to be the commander. We're sacrificial lambs. All of us. Isn't that hilarious? Isn't that hilarious? Doesn't that make you want to laugh? <sighs> and she says nine S we need. like, shut up. You kill two B. It's all we need to kill each other. Yep. And, and this is what the big reveal about two B. Yeah. A two says to be hated to keep killing you. It cost her so much pain. And a A two is feeling that pain yes. right now because two B two B's memories are alive yeah. inside in her. Right. So when she says this, it's as if two B is saying it. Yep. She's, she's got that concern for 9S now. Yeah. The 9S type is a high-end model. They knew you'd discover the truth eventually, but the model designation 2B was just a cover. The official designation is 2E, number two, type E. They were a, uh, a special class of members designed to execute your high units. But you knew that, right, 9S? Yep. And he's like, shut up, shut up. What do you know? You know anything about us at all? <laughs> uh, and then 153 tries to tell him, proposal, cease combat, fighting her at this point would be irrational. And, and then he just basically commands pod 153 to halt all logical thought and speech yeah. and that that order shall remain in effect until you confirm the death of either myself or you in A2. So yep. it, it, there's no more talk. He just set the, this is the board. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Now it's going down. So this is where the game allows you to choose. Yep. Your C ending or your D ending. Who do you want to uh, fight with? If you fight with A2, it leads to ending C. Uh, I guess, yeah. supposing you win the fight. <laughs> Childhood. Yeah, if you win. And then if you choose 9S, then it will lead to ending D. Yeah. So it's real, what's really nice about this is you can just reload the game after doing one. And, and it just takes get you right the there. other right. It just goes right back to this point where yeah. they're facing off and you, and you get the next ending. You don't have to play. And <laughs> then to get ending E, after you've completed all of the endings, A, B, C, and D, yeah. you just do the fight again. Yeah. So, it's really easy to get all three endings right back to back. Very quickly. So, let's just kind of go through them, summarize them. Ending C has... Nine S eyes are red now, by the way. Yes. I thought that Uh, was good. And so, A2 ends up, like, sort of taking off his arm, like, cutting off the arm that he had replaced with 2B's arm. Yeah, that's right. And then she sort of hacks into him. Which is something that Pod042 had sort of helped her learn how to do. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yep. Um... So, Pod, we're going to repair 9S's logic circuits. And he says, acknowledged. Tell me where to find the virus corrupting 9S. Affirmative. Your high unit A2 core data for 9S is stored ahead. Alert, severe virus corruption. Probability of successful deletion, extremely low. And then she says to him, I think I know a way. So she thinks she knows some way to sort of save no. 9S from the virus that's corrupting him. And, but, and this is left very ambiguous on purpose. I, I thought this was interesting. Uh, interesting to get your kind of read on this. The pod says, the idea under consideration is not recommended. This pod is a Yorha tactical support unit. As such, it cannot approve of actions that would damage its supported unit. So he's like, I, don't, I can't support something that would lead to your harm or right. death. And she's like, you're not so bad, pod, you know. <laughs> uh, you know that? I'll take care of everything, Pod, uh, you take. So she arrives up to like this pedestal where 9S is sort of laying down there. Yeah. Um, and she, there's like a pillar of light. So the Pod takes him away. There's like a pillar of light that she touches. <gasps> and there's some laughter coming from it. Some children laughing, oh, yeah, playing, right. that sort of thing. Yes. She touches it. It sort of like deconstructs. Uh, and then the whole tower starts like disintegrating, That's right, basically. Yeah. Um, and see a two that's childhood's end right there as well yeah um i'm sorry she but she says she's sorry before she does it so before she touches the pillar and destroys the tower she says i'm sorry i never quite realized how beautiful this world that she says as it's all crumbling around her i'm coming everyone i'm coming and then near autonomous meaningless code ending oh that's right hers is code and then Mm -hmm. childhood's end is the other one is any d uh, the credits play backwards here, coming from 
uh, top to bottom. Yeah, credits going reverse. Top. <laughs> I don't know what the point it, is of that. But interesting, interesting, I guess. Yeah. And then at the end of this, we see this moose in a forest who comes upon Tubi's sword and 9S's backpack, kind of just oh, like yeah, that's right. there. And then it ends. Okay, so that's ending C. Ending D, you play as 9S, it goes the other way around. He, as he likes, okay, so she's in a position where she could kill him, but she hears 2B's voice saying like, what does she say? 2B's voice says, oh, I actually took some other interesting dialogue while they're fighting. Um, so this is before they kill each other here. Um, nothing matters, but if it doesn't matter, why do I long for humans like this? Right. Says 9S. Why do I desire the touch of something that no longer exists? And she says, it's how we were made. Androids were designed to protect their human masters. Our core programming demands that we shut up. So there's still mm -hmm. kind of an essence existence thing going on here. Yeah. Like she and he both still feel this longing for humanity and the preservation, even though it's pointless to feel that. Yeah. I think that that could in some way echo maybe some people who, uh, not necessarily talking about myself, but people who maybe were religious at one time and they sort of came into conflict with the things that they believed. Maybe they, they left their church or they mm. don't believe in God anymore, but you'll still find at points in your life, you still have a certain way of thinking or a longing or believing yeah. in something that you, you don't even really believe in anymore. It's like, yes, yeah. why am I still thinking about this? Right. <laughs> you know, I, I think there might be something there in that. Um, I think that's it. It's almost as if there's always doubt in your mind um, yeah. where you can, if, if you're staunch religious, there's always the doubt yeah. that there, you know, there is no God. And then if you're a staunch atheist, there's always the doubt that, well, maybe there is a God. Yeah. But either way, there's always the doubt. No matter where you're at, there's always the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyways, she hesitates. So they're, they're fighting. A2 is in a position where she could kill him. Oh, yes. But she hears to be telling her to take care of him. That's what she says. Right. And so she hesitates. And in that hesitation, 9S stabs her, That's right. takes her to the ground, but then sort of falls on her sword and yeah, kills himself. They both die. And then they both, and it's, it's crazy because she just kind of rolls over, but he struggles for a That's long right. time. Like, uh, oh, 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 gosh. It's yeah. like pretty gruesome stuff. Well, he's clinging um, onto life. But he, he ends up, you know, uh, dying. Uh, fatal system error detected, says pod 153. Memory leak verified. Repair impossible. Beginning emergency evacuation of remaining memories. Um, actually, wait. No, no. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. Yep. I'm, my name is, my name is 9S. My name He's is sort 9S. of like rebooting, right? Newly manufactured scanner model, January 30th, 11942. Ooh, so he's only been around for three years? Yes. Huh? So yeah, this was three years before the current date, which we are at is 45. Yeah. Well, we talked about that earlier. So he talks about like uh, how alone he feels. Uh, there's no God to believe in. A lot of this yeah. kind of feeling alone, being aloof, distancing him, uh, him herself from me. He's talking about to be and others. Uh, we already kind of touched on all this. Um, I don't usually get a partner. It's kind of fun. You know, like all this stuff is kind of coming back up. Yeah. This tower is a colossal cannon built to destroy the human server. Destroy the server and rob the androids of their very foundation. That was the plan devised by those girls. But they changed their mind. Mm. They saw us androids. They saw Adam and Eve. They saw how we lived, considered the meaning of existence, and came to a different conclusion. This tower doesn't fire artillery. It fires an arc. Mm. An arc containing the memories of the foolish machine life forms. An arc that sends those memories to a new world. Perhaps they'll never reach that world. Perhaps they'll simply wander an empty sky for an eternity. But it's all the same to the girls. For them, time is without end. Adam and Eve are inside the ark. Eve is asleep. Adam holds him in a gentle embrace. He seems to be smiling at me. I try to look up at him, but my body refuses to move. Looks like the damage has spread to my motor functions as well. Will you come with us? Asks Adam. And I love this. The question was completely free of mouths. Right. It seemed I no longer had a reason to hate machines. Maybe I never had a reason in the first place. What have I been fighting for? Who have I been fighting for? I don't know anymore. I try to speak my mind, but the words don't come out right. My thought routines are losing cohesion. I don't, I can't remember my name. I'm mustering all my strength. I force out the words, I will go with you or I'll stay. 
essentially it's the same either way. Yeah. It's just the, this one I line had changes a little differently. <clears throat> um, yes, I'll go with you or I'll stay. If you choose, I'll stay. He says, I, we, Yorha, we don't deserve to be loved by this world. Um, and then, you know, the arc shoots out into the sky. Uh, to, uh, Nina Soto looks up into the sky and says, ah, so that's where you were to be and dies. Um, the arc launches, the tower collapses. Um, if you have killed Pascal at this point, it'll show the, the, like the machine village and just nobody's there. Oh, okay. But if you wiped his memory, then he'll be like, he'll walk out and sort of look up. So th this can change depending on mm. whether Pascal was killed or not. Um, but if you choose, I'll go with you. So we, your high units have no right to remain in this world. And it more or less plays exactly the same way. Okay. So that's ending D. Did you, you nice. said you had a question about childhood's end before. Um, we yeah. What exactly? Why, what does this have to do with the book? <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Cause I don't know <laughs> if I want to spoil childhood's end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, childhood's end I was gonna is read at it its a few months core. Ago about the next evolutionary step for the human race. Okay. Like going like way beyond what we are now. Hmm. Like not just like, oh, you know, one of the small evolutionary steps. I mean, like uh, we're no longer really human. It's like we've evolved from an ape into human and from human into something else. Okay. It's hmm. sort of like showing that trajectory. Cool. Um, and without spoiling it, <laughs> uh, there's similarities between the way that this sort of plays out that, that you could see as callbacks to that story. Okay. But Childhood, Childhood's End is an amazing, amazing book, and it's I, short. It's not long. Oh, cool. So I would recommend people read it. Well, I'm going to read it soon. I yeah. was going to read it a few months ago. I can't remember why I didn't. It's and then super I forgot. Good. I just never went back. It's super good. It's amazing. Another question then, uh, when 9S says, ah, so that's where you were to be. Yes. Is that where it was to be? Um, well, that's <laughs> left. The, the, a lot of this stuff is left open to interpretation. Ah, okay, at the okay. end. There's a lot of ambiguous was stuff Was she going on the on Ark there. or is she? That's a good question. Okay. Was she in the Ark? Right. Did the machines have her data? Is he sort of in the midst of dying and in his like oh. in his death moment wherever it is his consciousness is mm. going oh so that's where you were okay. you know what i mean like yeah, there, there's I just do. so many kind of ways you I could do. read that and there's good theories i'm um, not going to go over them right now because we're out of time and we'll probably just talk more next week if people want to share their feelings about what they think he's talking about we can bring those up next time cool. uh and when we go over comments and stuff okay um, but there's a lot of ambiguous stuff here like a lot um like, what exactly was it that A2 did there at the end? She collapses the arc and, like, basically destroys the machines, right? right? But, like, what is she interacting with there? What did she do with 9S's consciousness? Yeah. Um, the leading theory that I like in regards to this is whenever we go into 9S's mind previously in the game, it's very orderly. It's not, like, labyrinthine That's at all. That's true, yes. And in this place, it's kind of winding mm. and stuff that this is not okay. 9s's mind this is 9s's mind inside the machine network she's uh, going and okay. freeing him getting him out of okay. the machine network and then essentially taking down the machine network oh through him yes oh that makes a lot she of sense, hacked actually. him to get in the machine network uh, to take it down from the inside and while the machine network is sort of uh currently unguarded because they've all transferred into the arc and they're ready to shoot out. There's no defense system for that. Right. And it's kind of just like 9S was left as the only thing left inside the machine network. And they've all gone in the arc and she just like takes it all out while, and that's why she apologizes. And so that's, so, that was a theory I thought explained okay. what was going on there. I, that makes sense to me. Did the arc never got fired then? That and in the C ending? No, it gets destroyed and does not fire. Does. Okay. In the D ending it does because... Uh, 9S kills her, so she's not able to. Ah, that. that's right. Okay. But basically, all the machines are gone. In the sea ending. Yeah. If A2 wins, the machines are all killed and they don't escape on the arc. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think. I think that that's what's happening. Okay. 
So, good for going and ending Ian, wrapping up here? Yep. Okay. So, you play it again. You can do either C or D. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, once you get to the credits of ending E, which is called the end of Yorha. End of Yorha, yeah. Um, it says all, all Yorha black boxes are offline. Yep. So, all the androids are dead now. Yeah. And pod so it's oh, time to recycle and yes. start over again. But pod 042 is becoming a rebel. Mm hmm. Yep. So, as the credits are rolling, there's sort of some glitches and things going yeah, on, yeah. and uh, pod 153 comes on uh, and is like, hold on, like, we gotta, this is like unstable. We gotta, like, fix this and delete the data and do what yeah. they're supposed to do, which is start the program over again. Um, but uh, did I write the dialogue down? I, certainly I did. I wrote one part of it down. We were created to ex to execute the androids. Project Yorha's plan. We had no capacity for emotion. So this yes. is this is Pod zero four two speaking. But we had. But when we six were connected and exchanged information, something happened. I cannot deny the feeling of something resembling consciousness and emotion being born. Hmm. Unable to reply, she says to him. I keep saying him and her, but it's just the two points. Yeah, so what? <laughs> uh, 042 says, perhaps we now understand that not everything has to have an answer. Okay. I wrote this line. I, wrote, I have a little commentary on that one. So not everything has to have an answer. I My note says, hmm, that's kind of a cop out. <clears throat> a little bit. That being said, I agree. Yes. I agree with it. <laughs> but when maybe that was just a little too, I don't know. Uh, Easy. Yeah, it's like you play this whole game and in the end it's like you're trying to find the ending or you're trying to figure out what's going on in the end. It's like all ambiguous. You saying, know what? Oh, not everything has to have an answer. And it's just like, oh, it's this big letdown for the player. Um, even though I agree with the sentiment. Completely agree. I watched this great, great video. I'm going to suggest it to everybody to watch. Okay. Um, really popular YouTube channel. He does, you know, skits, comedy. That kind of thing. His name's like Joel Haver or something like that. Mm -hmm, never heard. Um, his, his stuff is great. <coughs> Joel Haver. Um, I kind of randomly stumbled. I kind of randomly stumbled on this video the other day. It's like pretty recently. He made it like two weeks ago. So he does these videos where he has this very weird animation stuff. He's, he's obviously filming it and then somehow applying uh, some kind of animation to make it filter like to make it look like a cartoon. Or, yeah, okay. Um, but it's called Curiosity Killed the George. Okay. In light of what we are talking about right now, I actually think it's a good idea to watch this. Okay. Because his, and, and it's, it's even better when you know him because he's such a silly guy. Yeah. And he's really funny and his videos are really silly and they always have <clears throat> this great humor to them. Mm -hmm. and, and he's just quirky and fun dude. And you, so you're going into that video thinking, oh my goodness, like what's this going to be? Especially when it's done in this style. Yeah. And it ends up being one of the most profound videos I've ever seen in my life. Oh, really? So let's watch that okay. real quick. Put the headphones on. Oh, and, yeah. and then I'll, I'll be curious to see what you have to say regarding this idea of there being no answers um, as a cop-out or whatnot. It's, <laughs> well, it's good great. stuff, though. Great. And it's, I thought it, it was great. It's kind it was of uh, in line with what we're talking about. It's like yes. you can spend your whole life sitting here obsessing looking through every door and every single uh breadcrumb yeah. left behind to find the answers and uh, the real the real ultimate answer is there is no answers you're never gonna arrive at like no <laughs> the I'd truth say. because what is the truth and when you have yeah. something i love that line at the end when you have something ex as as inexplicable as love right like what why ask all these questions? That's so funny because we kind of just, touched on that a little bit last yeah, episode. <laughs> just living in it and, yeah, and yeah. enjoying the present and, and loving while you still can. Yeah. Right. So I feel like that's kind of tied to what he means here when he yeah. says there are no answers. <clears throat> right. Not everything has to have an answer. Yeah. Right? Not everything has to have an answer. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. So. It's good. And I agree. I agree with the sentiment. It's just not what you want. <laughs> your <laughs> not video what you want came to tell you. <laughs> After you've been Tell reading me, give me the De Beauvoir and Nietzsche and I know. <laughs> uh, meaning and meaninglessness. Kant and Kierkegaard. Uh, and all these people. Sartre. Jean-Paul Jean Sartre and yeah. Pascal. Pascal, yeah. You, you're sitting here looking for answers. and uh, 
I don't know. We just, we just don't know. No. We can we can sit here and talk about it all day long, all all life, all your whole life. Yes, you can talk about it, and you'll you'll never really know because there is no answer. Well, I do I do have a lot to say about that, but you should probably hold off till next. Time. I'll hold off for <laughs> now. I I will say in something like life that it has that infinite complexity to it, mm-hmm. but in something in a world that's designed by Yoko Taro. <laughs> There can be an answer. He made it. He made it. He's not God. He's not some infinite being. Yeah. Like he, he knows the answers. Yeah. Um, but he, as we've talked about many times, he, he does not like giving, giving answers. answers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's part of his whole philosophy. So these robots are kind of, uh, acknowledging that here. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say is, uh, the mini game here. As you shoot all the names shooting is, is a shooting section. Yeah. It's designed to be impossible at one point. I, I, th- I find it hilarious and ironic that it's Square Co. LTD or Square Enix LTD that comes yeah. up. That is like the impossible thing to destroy <laughs> without dying. It's like the final boss. It's like you cannot <laughs> freaking shoot that thing without. Yeah, Anyways, that's pretty funny. each time you get killed by it, it, keep, it, it kind of brings back to some of those answers. Remember from the very, from the beginning, very beginning of the game? Yeah, kind of like the install. Yeah. You know, uh, is it all pointless? Do you think games are silly little things? Do you admit that there's no meaning in this world? Things like this. And you have to continue to be like, no, no, no. Like, yes, I'm going to persevere. And as it happens, uh, y- you can be saved or rescued by another player who has already finished the game. That's right. Yeah. Right. And then so you'll be surrounded by a bunch of other triangles. If you don't give up. Yeah. And you're able to get through this because somebody else online. Yeah. As you find out at the end of the credit sequence, sacrificed their save data in order for them to give you a chance to get yes. through the ending credits and see the end of the game. So you're prompted at the end, will you uh, sacrifice your save data? And they, they try to yeah. dissuade you with a bunch of different ways. You, you know, you may not be recognized for this. Yeah, um, no one's going to know. Yeah. It, it, it'll be totally random, and it may be someone you don't like <laughs> who That's ends right. up getting your help. Do you still want to do it? Do you still yeah. want to do it? And it just keeps doing this, right? Yeah. And kind of driving that point home. Um, but it all kind of ties back to this central theme we've been talking about, which is that we have all the reasons in the world to other somebody else. Yeah. But in the end, we all have the same cores, you know, the same, we're all part of the same stuff. We're all human beings. And I think in reality, if we would just reach out and touch hands and talk to each other, we, in good faith, we would realize that. And it would be a lot easier, I think, to make, um, compromises to, uh, we would be willing to compromise. We would, we would love these people if we knew them kind right, of a thing. Yeah. Right. Um, and instead of othering, instead of uh, demonizing, instead of constantly uh, finding ways in which we are different or finding reasons not to like somebody or, or to demonize them, uh, you know, if we could just do this, <laughs> it would sure make, uh, a lot of things a lot easier, but yeah. That's 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 obviously not um, going to happen. <laughs> uh, and, and it's very easy to say that. A totally not. different thing to do. But I mean, we well, can we do our part. Earlier about like the mathematical way of looking at things versus the yeah. more personal yeah. way of looking at things. And if you do the math, it's not looking good for you. Yeah, <laughs> right. But. But if you understand your sphere of influence and the people around you and, you know, the things that you can change, which may not be much, yeah, you know, then all of a sudden it's like, well, there is some hope locally. Yeah. So what can you do? Yeah. I guess is, it, it, again, we talk about this all the time, even in my line of work, you can't look at the scale of the problem no. or else you will just no. become totally defeated. Yeah. It's, it's like the, the starfish story, right? Where the guy's uh, going yeah, down the yeah. beach with all the beached starfish yeah, that's good. and he's throwing them back in the ocean. Yeah. And, uh, you know, someone's like, what are you doing? You're like, you can't save all these starfish. He's like, well, I'll save that one. Right. That's kind of the way you have to look at it. See, it if you can't uh, save them all, problem. then don't do anything. It's, right. That's not the right way. That's to not the right it. answer either. Yeah. It's, I can't speak to everybody through this microphone on the planet and try to share what I shared today. Yeah. But I can speak to a few. And they can, within whatever sphere of influence they have, right. speak to a few and do what we can as parts of sort of this collective human intelligence Yes, to move mm-hmm. it 
yeah. in that direction. And, uh, <coughs> and so that's kind of what I took away from this game. And I, I think it's cool. a, a hugely, hugely important thing for our time. And for every time, I guess, that's ever been. But I think especially now with the internet and the way that we're so easily able to come in contact with others in other groups. We're not isolated into our small tribes of people. We are connected across yeah, the whole right. world now. Yes. And so, like, how do we deal with that? Because we're going to constantly come across differing right. ideologies, differing religions, differing, uh, you know, societal uh, morality and right. culture, food, the clothes, things we disagree on and things we're dress, disgusted yeah. about, even. Yeah, yeah. This, these things will confront us all the time in ways that did not happen before this. <laughs> yes. So how do We've we... We've been thrust into this new world. How do we figure out how to be a united race? Mm -hmm. Because if, we're, if we don't figure it out, like this is a technology that essentially will lead to something very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway. That's good. Um, did you see a post credit scene by any chance? Uh, yes. So there's where they're flying off. Yes, it's really at good. At the end, right? And she's, yep. she has, she, the pod, has that monologue very similar to the opening monologue, right? Everything that lives is designed to end. They are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. However, life is all about the struggle within right. the cycle. This is what we believe. Pod 153 to pod 042. How is it going? I am embarrassed. Why is that? I launched a suicide attack, and yet here I am still alive. I must look very silly. <laughs> Do not feel bad about it. We are alive, after all. And being alive is pretty much a constant stream of embarrassment. That's a, such a good line to, like, leave on. <laughs> I love that. And well, I, I love, guess there's a little more, but uh, he's, I love how he says, that concept is a bit too abstract for me to understand at this time. <laughs> I will save it in my list of things to analyze later. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so question. Good. Pod 042, did the data salvage restore all of their past memories? Yes. And are those recovered parts of the same design we pre of as previous ones? Yes. Then won't that simply lead us to the same conclusion as before? Yep. I cannot deny the possibility. However, the possibility of a different future also exists. A future is not given to you. It is something you must take for yourself. Uh, so, and then as, as they sort of uh, fly off into the sky. One yeah. lands near the body of, oh, doves. Yeah, there's a bunch of doves flying off of into the fly sky. Up, yeah. One lands near the body of A2. So 9S, 2B, and A2 are kind of restored back in their bodies, but with their memories, not mm -hmm. with them being wiped and not with right. the, the cycle being restarted um, in the way that they were meant to do it. But if, they're, if it's all restored exactly the way it was before, will it not just repeat anyways? Well, that's the question. But there's a possibility it won't. So we'll see what happens. That's all I got to say for today. It's very good. Then you can leave a message too before you delete your yeah, whole thing. And, and that, I yeah. thought this was interesting. You can't just write your no, own message. I they don't let you do that. Like, who? Yeah. <laughs> nope. You've got set blocks of phrases that you can put together. Because all it would be it. Is, is suck my balls on there. <laughs> that's all people would write. <laughs> Absolutely. And no, it's pre sort of selected yeah, phrases yeah. that you have to choose. But I love the it's sentiment like, of it. Keep going. You can do yeah. it. Don't give up. I love the sentiment of it. And, Me too. Um, yeah. Wonderful game. Really, really, really profound. You, you know, really though, beautiful. it's it sounds like Yoko Taro doesn't quite trust people when he does that, nope. though. <laughs> and it's nope. like, you got he this knows. great thing. Oh, people are going to reach out from somewhere in the other whole other side of the world. It's going to be great. Nope. Um, oh, but I don't really trust them enough to <laughs> let you hear from them directly. So, you know, uh, the yeah. preset stuff also helps with translation as well. So you, oh, sure. I don't know if it's oh, regionally true. locked, uh, but it I, could be. It, uh, this system could lend itself towards you being saved by someone in like Vietnam and you can still understand their message to you because yeah. it's easy to translate in those blocks. Right? Yeah, right. So, so there it is. Uh, we will do one more episode next week talking about connections to near replicant gestalt. Yep. Uh, anything we missed, like talking about Siren, uh, uh, Soren Kierkegaard and uh, yeah. responding to some, uh, you know, comments, things of that nature. So we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. 